The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. I'd like to call this Tampa City Council evening meeting to order. If we could have a roll call, please. Carlson. Here. Hertek. Here. Clendenin. Here. Henderson. Present. Vieira. Here. Miranda. Here. Maniscalco. Here. We have a physical quorum. All right. If I can get a motion to open all public so hearings. Moved. Second. We have a motion from Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the first one is a non-quasi-judicial proceeding. Before we go through the agenda, we're going to take up item number one, LaShawn or McLean, right? Oh, well, we're going to do housekeeping after at two. You want to do it now or do you want it after number one? Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good evening, Council. McLean Evans, Assistant City Attorney. This is an application for Brownfield designation. Tonight is the first of two hearings. Um, it is properties generally located in the vicinity of 1306 East 4th Avenue. The property developer, KS Ebor Master Developer LLC, is requesting designation of these properties as the Brownfield area to assist in the assessment and remediation of environmental impacts that may exist on the property. Details of the designation have been outlined in a document entitled Staff Report on Ebor Gateway Redevelopment Area Proposed Brownfield Area Designation, which is available for public review both in the clerk's office and on sire associated with this evening's hearing. Tonight, no action is required from council other than to hold the hearing and accept public comment. The conclusion of the <coughs> second public hearing, which is scheduled on September 7th, uh, 2023 at 9 a.m. or as soon thereafter. Council will have an opportunity to pass a resolution designating <coughs> this site, Ebor Gateway Redevelopment as a brownfield area. Staff and air available if you have any questions. Any questions at this time? I hear and see none. If there's anybody from the public that wishes to speak on item number one, now is your opportunity. If not, we'll have the second public hearing September 7, 2023 at 9 a.m. here in the chambers. All right, we don't close anything. We just keep it open, correct? Close the public hearing. You can close this one okay. if you would like to. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Ms. Sanchez? Are you walking up? No? Are you coming up to speak? No? Oh. All right. Can I get a motion to close? So we'll we have a motion to close from Councilman Clendenin, second from Councilman Moran. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Second public hearing is going to be held on September 7, 2023 at 9 a.m. or soon thereafter here at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa Fort. Boom. You good? You All right. We've opened the public hearing, so we'll go to LaShawn to uh, go through the agenda for this evening, and then we'll swear everybody in. Yes, good evening, Chairman and Council LaShawn, Doc Development Coordination. And if I may, I just have a couple of housekeeping items before we get to clear the um, agenda. The first is I'd like to mention um, on the staff reports that you've received, you'll notice that some of the staff reports have a new format. Um, just briefly to go into the format of the staff report, it has been um, reconfigured to provide you the information that normally is provided in paragraph format in a table. Um, so. On the new reports, what would happen is on the older reports that were issued on continued cases, you'll see the older format, and eventually you'll see the new format on all of the cases. But the project information regarding the lot size, your square footages, all the parking information will be found in that table. Um, then we provide the table for the surrounding uses. 
The summary area is the same, but it would not repeat the information provided um, before. One other change you will notice is under the general staff findings. Um, it's located in one area on the report. So there's one table. For the staff, which is not concerning council, but in the background, is these have become drop downs for urban planners to select when they're creating the report, and any modifications are contained within each department's area if they have site plan modifications. The analysis is the same, um, but if you notice anything that's missing or you want anything added, just let me know. We can certainly revise and update as needed as we move along. So um, the other item I'd like to um, announce is we have a new staff member to announce that has joined our team. Um, I'd like to announce um, Samuel Thomas. Um, he's coming to us. Um, Sam, you recognize him. He was with the Planning Commission. Um, with the Planning Commission, he was an urban planner there. So Sam is an um, urban planner too. In that position, in this new role, he will process rezoning, special use twos, and alcoholic beverage sales um, petitions. So for the next couple of hearings, you'll see Sam present on some of the reports that were already um, prepared, and then eventually he'll have his own set of cases that he will run each night. So, And with that, thank you so much um, for allowing me to do that housekeeping. I'll go ahead and clear the agenda. All right. So there's one item on this evening's agenda to remove, um, and that is item number 12. Item number 12 is REZ 2354. This is a um, missed notice, so this will be removed from the agenda. Here we have a motion to remove item number so 12. Moved. Motion from Councilman, uh, Councilmember Miranda, second Councilman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Anything else, or is that it? Um, no, so that's it. So we're ready to start with item two. All right. If you are going to speak on any of the items on the agenda this evening, please stand up, raise your right hand, and we will swear you in. I do. Thank you. Item number two. Thank you again, Council LaShawn Dock Development Coordination. Item number two is REZ 2276. This is for the property located at 2406 West North B Street. The applicant is represented by Steve Michelini. The request is to rezone the property from RM16 residential multifamily to PD plan development for residential single family attached uses. So I'll turn it over to Emily <coughs> to give her report and I'll come back and give my report. Before I get started with my report, uh, the Planning Commission needs to submit a revised staff report into the record. There were two changes. There were two changes that needed to be made to the staff report. The first one removes the reference to North A Street and corrects it with North B Street in the calculation of block density sentence with the, contained in the staff analysis. And the second one is correcting the statement that the site is one block from Kennedy. The site is actually two blocks from Kennedy. Uh, okay, so the subject site is within the Central Tampa Planning District, the West Tampa Urban Village, and the Armory Gardens neighborhood. The site's within the coastal planning area and specifically evacuation zone C. Um, the site is right here, outlined in purple, and the surrounding area is residential in character with some single family detached and some multifamily as well. Um, the portion of West North B Street between North Tampania Avenue contains a, just a mix of everything and um, there are multifamily uses. This is the subject site outlined here. It's represented by the Residential 20 Future Land Use designation, and the look, designation is to the north, south, east, and west of the site. It surrounds it. Further to the southeast in the pink color is Community Mixed Use 35, and further south along West Kennedy is the Urban Mixed Use 60 designation. Um, the segment of North B Street between North Tampania Avenue and North Armenia Avenue is developed at 15.01 dwelling units per acre based on 15 sample sites, which is, which is approximately 75% of the density anticipated in the area. The PD proposes 19.5 dwelling units per acre, which is consistent with the density planned 
for under the residential 20 designation consistent with land use policy 8.14.1. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. The request is also consistent with the compact city form strategy, which encourages infill development within proximity to transit and employment services. The comprehensive plan encourages single family attached developments to be designed to include orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk or street. The proposed entrances to units one and eight are oriented towards the sidewalk on North B Street. Internal pedestrian connections are provided to internal facing units with sidewalk connections to North B Street, meeting the intent of land use policy 9.2.6. The proposed development Plan development would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the development pattern anticipated under the residential 20 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. If you have any, any questions. questions at this time? No. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you again, Council LaShawn Doc, Development Coordination. And this um, PD rezoning um, would allow for the development of the property with eight residential um, single family attached units. Um, the site contains 17,909 square feet. Um, there are two um, residential single family attached structures that um, are proposed on site, and each structure would contain four units. And let me show the site plan just so you have it for reference. So here are the two structures that are on site and you can see each site has the four <coughs> units. You'd, um, vehicular access to the site is from the south, from the alley. Um, there are two parking spaces proposed with the surface parking spaces um, south of each building. Um, inside of each building, two car um, garage parking is provided for each unit. And the site is located in the West Tampa overlay, so it must comply with the West Tampa overlay standards at the time of permitting. Um, on the staff report, it does mention within, on page two of the staff report, that there's one waiver to the overlay requested, but um, all the overlay standards were met. That waiver in this regarding the orientation of the front doors, and that's for these units, or for 27 to 82. So where is North B? This is North B Street, I'm sorry to orient you on that. Yes, this is North B. And so these units, which are identified as unit two, three, four, five, six, and seven, those doors orient towards the internal drive. Only units one and unit eight, which are these two most northern units, orient, the front door orients to North B. And so this site is in the R20 um, designation um, for the future land use category, as Emily has mentioned. So it does allow up to 18 dwelling units by right, and you can have 20 dwelling units um, per acre um, with bonus provisions met. So the applicant has entered into a bonus agreement to allow one additional unit. With the square footage of the land that they have currently, they're allowed seven dwelling units, and so they're requesting a bonus to allow one additional unit. And that bonus is in the amount of $35,146.80 to achieve that one additional unit on site. And um, also let me show you the elevations provided. So the structure proposed is a three-story structure. So first, this is the north elevation that is provided. So this is the view on North B Street. And that's the front door that's oriented on that unit to North B. And then this provides you with the elevation, the inter internal. So this will be towards the internal drive. And the buildings are identical. So <coughs> this is your south elevation. And then that also is the other side of the structure. And then I have the zoning out. Let's let me show you the zoning map of the property. So to orient you on this site, on this map, this is the site which is outlined in red. This is West North B Street. This is Campania. This is Armenia. This is Kennedy. 
So you can see surrounding the site has that RM16 zoning. Um, you have the RM18, um, which is located to the north, to the west, and I have pictures of these sites. Um, but you have that residential multifamily zoning in the area. As you move east to Armenia, you have the commercial zoning and the commercial uses and um, some CN and PD uses along Armenia. And this is the site on North B. This is what you see in that RM18 um, district that's to the north in that zone. This is also north. This is the view if you're looking east on North B. So the site on this picture is to the right, off on the right side of the picture. This is east of the site. The development review staff has reviewed the request and finds the request inconsistent. Um, the findings are related to compatibility with the use proposed, um, not necessarily the, the use, but the scale. Um, on the staff report, um, you'll find the analysis, which is provided on pages four and five within that report. Um, it does speak to the area surrounding the site. Although it has residential multifamily zoning, the predominant use is residential single family. Um, there are some two-family uses that are um, within that area, but the zoning is not consistent with the actual uses out on site. Um, so the PD request for eight single-family units is out of character with the surrounding neighborhood. Um, also, the applicant, I just want to note, did work with staff to redesign the site. Initially, the site was designed with um, entry on um, North B. They changed it. Um, the effort was to try to meet all overlay standards as much as they could. So um, this is how they have the design, which is before you today, with the alley access um, on site. But given the number of units in the three-story structures in the surrounding area, which do not have that height and that number of units on site, staff found a request inconsistent. There are um, revisions to be made between first and second reading. I have a revised revision sheet, which I'll provide to you. Um, and I'm available if you have any questions. That concludes my presentation. Any questions at this time? No? All right. Well, okay, thank you. Up. Thank you very much. Good evening, Council. Steve Michelini. I have been sworn. Um, this project started off probably about eight or nine months ago, and it's been revised several times to try to accommodate comments from both the staff and from the neighbors. Um, the land use is a residential 20, which allows up to 20 units per acre. We're proposing eight units uh, with a bonus provision. Seven units could be built by right. Uh, it's like 7.2 units and since uh, you round down the eight units require a bonus uh, density re uh, agreement <clears throat> two units on the north uh, north side of, of north b face face the street and uh, the remaining units face an interior walkway and road there's a as you heard from the planning commission it was found to be compatible and consistent with the development pattern. Um, the 35 feet in height, I think, you know, when the, when the staff is talking about three stories, they should be talking about the height, which is the same as single family residential. So if you, I don't know that you could get four stories or I don't know if you could get, you know, more, but the issue is what is the maximum height and it's the same as single family residential. Um, with respect to promoting the efficient and sustainable use of the land and the infrastructure, it was found to be consistent. With respect to encouraging flexible and land development that reduces transportation needs, it was found to be consistent. It should be noted that it's only two blocks away from a, a transit corridor, which council in the past has said, we want to encourage and find <coughs> higher density close to 
and on these transit corridors. <clears throat> To promote and encourage the development where appropriate in location, it has been found to be consistent with that. Um, with respect to promoting desired living and working conditions uh, through the application of minimum requirements of other zoning districts, it is a working class area um, that would provide additional housing. And council again has gone on record as saying we need housing. Uh, this proposal is requesting the one additional unit. It's not, it's not a huge project, it's a relatively small and moderate project. Promote the architectural features and elements. I have some colored elevations to share with you to show that it does meet with the uh, West Tampa overlay district with a roof pitch. Previously we had flat roofs and some other things like that, um, but they were removed and again this was as a result of discussions with the staff and we went back and had an additional <coughs> development review committee and revised the site plan the design criteria is a proposed development is unique and therefore in need of waivers the waiver we're requesting is the orientation of the doors which you found frequently you can't have all of these units facing the side street when we tried to uh, orient all of the units toward uh, North B, we ran into some consistency problems regarding the use of the alley and, and the access. The waiver, if allowed, would substantially not, not interfere and injure the rights of other. The interior um, access for the doorways does not injure or act, affect any other adjacent property owner. That's an internal issue that only affects the, the residents of this unit or these units. The waiver is in harmony with and serves the general intent and purposes of the chapter. I don't think the chapter was intended to stop all types of development just because the doorways didn't face North B Street or any other street. Allowing the waiver will result in substantial justice being done. It'll allow a moderate dense uh, development to move forward with the, with the issue regarding the waiver of the, of the doorways and the orientation. A, draw your attention to several of the comments made by the Planning Commission um, that include that you could build, first of all, you could build seven units by right. The goals and objectives and policies of the Tampa Conference plan to create inspired urban design and living conditions <clears throat> with a human scale. Again, the height is 35 feet. Um, uh, uh, that is what a single family residential scale is. Regulate the levels of building intensity and according to the standards. The standards are affected by the, the land use designation, which is residential 20, and we are below that requested residential 20 density. Granted, we have to have a, um, a density bonus of one unit to get there. However, it's still below the maximum density it's allowed. Encourage compact, higher density development and is compatible with the surrounding character. Directly across the street and surrounded this are other multifamily projects um, that, and, and commercial properties to the south and also to the east. The use of limited land resources more effectively pursue the development pattern uh, that is economical, economically sound and encouraged by infill development. This project complies with, with that request to provide adequate infill development. Support the urban village designations <clears throat> that produce a distinctive high quality built environment. This will uh, utilize the existing infrastructure and it will provide for it uh, an additional units there for, for living. The urban villages contain most of the following uses which are typically made up and considered a traditional livable community, single and multifamily, residential neighborhoods serving commercial, schools, parks, and central gathering places, mass transit, safe walkable pathways that connect people to areas of the village this site does all of those things and again these are the findings that are from your professional planning commission staff ensure that the development projects in the urban villages are designed for pedestrian traffic and connect to the citywide <laughs> transit this connects to existing and proposed sidewalks that will have to be developed these are on-site sidewalks and the connections that it'll have to make uh, so that individuals can access Kennedy Boulevard in, in particular. 
Development projects in the urban villages must be oriented and integrated in a scale with the surrounding community. Again, single family residential is allowed to be 35 feet in height. We're not asking for additional height, and this would be 35 feet in height. <clears throat> Objective, uh, an existing future land development regulation shall be consistent with the comprehensive plan. The planning commission staff has found that it's consistent. Development shall not exceed the densities and intensities. Again, this does not. It's below the R20 of the designation. Each land use category shall have a unique set of zoning districts that may be permitted. <clears throat> that may be permitted. This is allowable under the land use designation. Compatible development and redevelopment to sustain stable neighborhoods. This will not disrupt that neighborhood in any respect. <clears throat> it's the intent of the city to, for new residential development projects shall be minimally disruptive. It's difficult to see if you have directly across the street townhouses with front driveways that are not alley access uh, that the staff showed you a picture of. That this would be disruptive when you're showing the access via the alley. Accommodate the greatest concentration of housing in desirable pedestrian oriented urban areas, having convenient access to local and regional transit. This is also conveniently located and accessible to those regional transit areas. Encourage higher density multifamily development in pedestrian oriented urban areas. Encourage housing development in medium and large scale with heights greater than those in the low rise area. Although that the single family residences can go up to 35 feet, they may not be, but this does not exceed the height regulations as provided for single family. Accommodate larger scale structures while maintaining the livability of communities including measures which minimize the appearance or bulk. And you can see this is, is very similar to what you have directly across the street if you refer back to the photograph that I have on the, <coughs> on the overhead. <clears throat> Promote high density residential development in business centers and urban villages. It does that and it, it is consistent with that objective. Ensure that adequate supply of housing is available. Designate sufficient land for residential development to accommodate the share and the need for <coughs> increasing demand for housing. Continue to monitor residential development to ensure that adequate sites are there to accommodate that need. Encourage the new housing on vacant land and infill. It does all of that. Continue to coordinate an orderly provision of public facilities, and this relies on the public facilities that are there. If they are found to be insufficient, then the development will have to pay for and upgrade the facilities, including water, sewer. I guess I got a comment there. <laughs> they were not, they were not it, sworn in. You can't admit that to them. It's been a running comment, by the way, Mr. Minkley. I understand. I understand. Continue to monitor uh, and, and encourage new housing. Goals and objectives to the provision of public facilities, as I already said. Promote the residential development pattern consistent with the rest of the city. I don't see how you can find this inconsistent when there are properties all around this that are very similar size scale and, and are found to be compatible. Um, a street is consistent with the density of an anticipated plan under the residential 20 designation. The request will provide more infill development in the site and designation presently utilized under land use policies 1 1.2, 6, 2.11, 2.12, 5.11, 5.14, 9.38. And the request is consistent with the city's policy and their goals and objectives with compact city strategy that, in, that in, encourages and promotes housing densities. Um, moving forward, I mean, as, as you all know, I mean, the city is facing a housing problem um, and providing additional units that go toward meeting the spirit of the code uh, is really the direction, at least I, that's what I've heard from the council in the past, is that what you want is to meet as much, many of those as you can. Um, let me just run through the things that we've changed since the first site plan was submitted. We've moved the front setback back to meet the front average on North B Street. Change the side yard setback from seven to five feet to meet the overlay district requirements and standards. Remove the rooftop patios and lowered the maximum building height to 35 feet. Change the roof from a flat roof to a 412 pitch, meeting the overlay district design standards. 
remove the driveway access from North B so that their alley access is the only one provided. Replace previously paved areas with vehicle access on North B and exchange that for green space. May driveways between buildings two and three, <clears throat> I'm sorry, between the two buildings wider and added sidewalks connecting all units to the sidewalk oriented toward North B Street. Redesign the floor plan to change the front door entrances on the two units facing North B Street so that they are true front doors and not fake doors. Added front porches to the front two facing North B in order to have it more aesthetically pleasing. Increase the, uh, the floor up to 24 inches above grade, the finished floor elevation, and compl uh, to comply with the West Tampa overlaid design standards. Added two visitor parking spaces amounting to double the parking requirements that are provided for in the code. Redesign elevations from contemporary aesthetic and modern farmhouse to better match the character of the neighborhood. Um, I believe that we have gone a long way toward trying to meet all of the provisions in the code. We respectfully request your approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. We have endeavored to address the, all of the issues that were raised with the exception of the density issue and the front doors that uh, anyone has discussed with us. I would appreciate your concern uh, or any comments you might have and reserve my, uh, my time for rebuttal. Any questions from the council member? Yes, sir. Councilman come down. So uh, do you have the elevations for the, uh, the other elevations from like the alley side or are they? Across the street? No, for, for, the, for these two buildings. What, what about the, from the alley perspective? That's and, from the alley. Okay. And so, you, so these, these uh, the units will be, th that driveway is accessible from the alley, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, good. And our... This is the North B elevation. Oh, yeah, show, I got that. Showing the door. So is, with Euclidean, the, so you, you said you, in an effort to, to accommodate, it's probably the wider drive in the middle, which is good. Um, you move the side yard setbacks from, is that why you moved them from seven to five? The West Tampa overlay is five feet. Five feet, okay. So we had a wider uh, side yard setback, but um, by moving the buildings back for the driveway, we gained a couple of feet and made right. it wider so you could make the turn easier off of the alley. Okay, so and, and so we'll, Will these elevations be submitted with the site plan as maybe as a council condition that it, this is built the way it's displayed, you know, at least as substantially the way it's displayed? Yes, sir. We've, okay. we've made this part of the record. The, the only difference was the, the other elevations were in color. Yeah, okay. But I'll be happy to include this as part of our package. Yeah, okay. Very good. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? If not, we'll go to public comment. All right, let's go to public comment. If you are here to speak, please state your name. You'll have three minutes. Yes, ma'am? I have one second. And before I start, I was just asking, uh, Kevin, may we use those two elevations that Mr. McLeany just presented just to, because they weren't in the record. Okay. And, but they apparently are going to be part of the record. So may we borrow them or is that not allowed? I, it just, Mr. It, McElhinney, can you clarify? Yes, sir. They're in the record. They're just not colored. But I'll be happy to allow them to use them. Oh, thank you. I'll return them. Thank you. Can I stand here and help you? Um, I think I'll be fine, thank you. But I appreciate the offer. Uh, Delphine Jones. She's right there. Where is Where is Delphine Jones? I'm sorry. Right there. Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, Jerome Adcock. Thank you. Two additional minutes, please. All right, you have five minutes total. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, once. 
Okay, Debbie Zimmerman, 192 Corsica Street, and I've been sworn. Um, by way of background, I think some of the older presiding, not older council members, but council members that have been on the board for, for longer periods of time, maybe were familiar with my background, but by way of background, I moved to Florida in 1993. I've been in the area of affordable housing finance uh, from a municipal level or an investment banking level for my entire career in Florida. Bonnie Wise, which many of you know, was my contemporary. I was with what is now RBC Capital Markets. She was William R. Huff. I have a similar starting background as Ms. Wise. Uh, and in, in, in Texas, where I moved from, I was in investment banking and traditional banking in the real estate banking group dating back to 1980. So this has been my career. It's what I do every day. I'm in my 20th year of a major large county uh, housing finance authority. I'm, I'm their municipal financial advisor, so I look at this type of stuff all day, every day. Um, with regards to the uh, package that I handed out to you, I won't go into a lot of detail between uh, items one and two. They're provided as uh, background to demonstrate basic findings and facts. Uh, the tab one, uh, I think LaShawn Doc uh, explained that very clearly. There's a there's significant basis for the inconsistent finding in the staff report. And uh, tab two is very important because it's very clear that this is a townhome style development. And I'll get into why that matters in just a minute. Um, the intent of my pre presentation is to demonstrate facts, not opinions. We also are demonstrating the facts on this site, not any other sites around it, because as we talk about all the time, this zoning request pertains to this site, and we don't know the circumstances of the other sites, so that should be irrelevant information. Um, so now what I'd like to do is go into the tab three, which is the bonus provision section, and start addressing some issues. And, and actually, as I, uh, and I'm going to leave this picture up here. Um, when, you, when I'm talking and when you're looking at this picture, um, keep in mind that these pedestrian walkways are right in front of the garages. So we see this, these beautiful children in the back. If they wanted to go next door and visit their friend, presumably, this is a pedestrian walkway. The pedestrian children will walk on it, and there's garage doors immediately adjacent to the walkways. Um, something as simple as that is a basic finding of potential safety concerns that are, as a grandmother and a mother of three children, five grandchildren, I, I find are significant because a child could get hurt because you won't be able to see them when you're backing out of your garage. But back to the bonus provisions. Um, what I have here, let's see, how do I, is that the right direction? Yeah, upside down. Upside down. Okay, I, I tend to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. The code has some very specific provisions. I'm sorry, I did the wrong one. My apologies. This one is what I want. The code has very specific provisions uh, with regards to the bonus provisions. Um, with this PD, re with this request, you have kind of a chicken and an egg. The PD has eight units, so if you don't have the bonus provision, the PD won't be able to be built. The bonus provision has some issues that I think are quite significant, and if you don't have the bonus pr provisions, you know, both of them have to come in tandem. And the bonus provisions per this process will be addressed after this first reading if the PD is approved. I think it needs to be very clear that there's no insinuation or any kind of demonstrated precedent that this, these bonus provisions will go through. And in fact, the code says, this section, however, does not mandate the award of a bonus no. provision. So with a PD, you're doing a workaround of the code, and you're also creating a mechanism to get a bonus provision that you would not get if this was an RM16. Because if you look up here, it says that uh, that compliance all new developments requesting, and they have several development cat or zoning categories, one of which is a PD. There's no RM16 in there. So you would not be able to get the extra unit with an RM16. Oh, um, then I better get quick. The, uh, look at, please look at the code, and I thought I had more time. And you will look that, oh, do not have vested rights in the bonus provision. That's terrible. And the code does not, the plan does not meet the requirements of a townhome development. A single family attached, you can have two categories, one's townhouse and one's condominium. 
This does not identify the single, the individual lots for a townhome, and that would be in tab, uh, wait, sorry. I thought I, the time went by so quickly, I'm sorry. Um, that is in the, sorry, 27, it's in the earlier one, sorry. 27282.9 and it's section B1. When you build these, you get one or the other. So I'm sorry I ran, ran over and um, I'm much. available for any questions if you have them. Thank you. All right, next speaker. I'm told you did. Oh, I did? Okay. Yes. She said a five minute time. <laughs> Is there a speaker waiver for him? No. 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 Three minutes. He's out of character. <laughs> All right, please say your name. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Caroline Bennett. I'd like to direct your attention to the last city staff report that was submitted on 814. With all these inconsistencies, I don't know how council can approve this PD. The city staff finds the proposed plan inconsistent, saying it is incompatible with the surrounding community. City staff cited the fact that the front doors do not meet the required standard. Staff finds this PD is out of character with the surrounding community. Their report states these three-story structures are incompatible with the built environment and that the proposed development of eight units is not appropriate in a location with surrounding parcels that contain one or two units. They also say the proposed scale of three stories is out of character with the surrounding area. What is interesting about the report from the Planning Commission, which is page two, and as you can see, they corrected the problem with the address, so I've marked out what I'm no longer going to refer to, um, <clears throat> is that it is in direct conflict with the city staff report and even the Planning Commission's own citations. They appear to ignore the comp plan, which states, the guiding principles toward shaping the city's future involve steering growth and change to specific parts of the city while strengthening and protecting our residential neighborhoods from development pressures. LU policy 1.2.3 says, relate new buildings and development to the context of the neighborhood and community. This PZ does not do that. LU policy 1.2.17 says, ensure that the zoning code reinforces quality urban design as it relates to the context of the area. Again, this PD does not do that. They cite LU policy 9.2.6, which says, Encourage single-family attached and multi-family developments to be designed and include orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk and street. Even though six of the doors do not meet this code, they find it consistent. This design has eight entrances, but only two face the street in compliance with LU 9.2.6. But the Planning Commission staff's comment about the front doors is very confusing. The report says both unit entrances are oriented toward and connect the sidewalk on West North A Street, but there are eight doors, not two. So I'm confused about what exactly they mean by both unit entrances. It doesn't make sense. This project is not compatible with the surrounding area. The city staff finds it repeatedly inconsistent, incompatible, inappropriate, and out of character. Please deny this PD with its substandard site plan so this site can be developed with something the neighborhood can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please state your name. Adrian Laramie. Um, I live in the Army Gardens neighborhood. Okay. Today I am here to express my concern about the request of the rezoning of the property at 2406 West North B Street application number at res 2276. The buildings that are being planned for the, this, this address will have some serious impacts on the Armory Garden neighborhood, the surrounding neighborhood, and the block where I live. I live at the end of the alley, which is right here, um, where the alley would be ending up on Tampania Avenue. Um, the vehicle access to this project will be the alley. It is estimated that once this is put in, 
there will be approximately 46 cars using the alleyway on a daily basis. That'll be approximately um, you know, 92 trips going in and out of the alley. This is the back of the house, and um, this is the property across the, uh, the alley from where the, the, um, the property is. Um, showing a little bit going down the alley, this is the property here, and this is the alley going towards um, Armenia Avenue. Um, when you get to the end here, there's a dip that goes down. Remember that Ar Armenia Avenue is 40 miles an hour, uh, the traffic going through there. So, and they can only turn to the right. So it means a lot of the people that go on the, going towards west or north will actually go out the opposite end of the alley. And this is a little bit more information about the alleyway here going down. And this is the, on the opposite side of Armenia Avenue. Now going to the other direction, and this is a garage apartment in the back of the, um, the property, and this is the alley right here, and this is going west, and this is the property here. So as you go that way, um, most of the, the, the um, people exiting the project will be going out that direction on a daily basis. And currently there are, um, there's several buildings that are exiting on the property. There's three properties that have um, two um, units on the property that are exiting that area as well. And those are new townhouses. Plus there's an additional businesses on the far end towards Armenia that will be using the exit. Um, and they will be going out, they currently go out both directions. And um, parking is also going to be an issue on, on all the streets because when they're parking on the street, there's also the, the dumpsters that are going to be put out um, on Tuesdays and Fridays, so there's no parking there because everyone has to get their dumpsters out there as well. Um, and I just ask you not to put this PD into, into the area because it's definitely going to make an overflow of traffic onto the alleyway, which is dangerous for everybody, and my house is right on the end of it. Thanks Thank you so much. much. All right, next speaker, please state your name. You have three minutes. Good evening, City Council. My name is Dennis Craig, and I represent Thrifty Rents. Uh, the owner was unable to make this because of sickness, so they've asked me to fill in. Now, I have presently rented at 208 North Armenia, which is on the end, on the east side of this proposed property. We have, it's a commercial office there that comes in right off of uh, Armenia. There is a small entrance to this alley. There are, as you know, there are, if you know or not, there is a built up wall along Armenia right there, and it ends where the alley is. So on many occasions, I was leased out of that office for at least 10, 15, years, I saw many trucks, cars going through there that were hitting this retaining wall. Also, there was a problem when I was leasing that office for many years, and this goes back six, seven years since I've been in that location, we had multiple parking problems. Okay, his proposal is to be next door. Visitors, whatever coming in there, our parking lot is right next, we got eight parking spots. Even when I was there, people were constantly coming in either over the weekend or they'd have visitors around that. They would park their cars in our parking lot. And if I came in the next morning, there'd be two or three cars there. We had, by the time we got towing people out there, they had snuck in and moved their cars. With all this, with eight units there and all these cars coming through there, it is just, there's not going to be the, that alley is not going to support this. You know, it, and another thing, too, is emergency vehicles trying to get into this alleyway off Armenia is almost, you know, very difficult for them to turn up in there or even coming off Tampania Street. It is a very narrow alley, and uh, it's a lot na uh, narrower than North B Street is. Uh, Thrifty Rents also owns the property behind ours, which is at uh, on North B Street and, Ken and uh, Armenia, and the own property next to uh, uh, this proposed property. So we're going to have two properties adjoining this thing. And like I said, with no parking on North B Street or anything like this, it's all going to end up in our parking lot because this happened six, seven years ago 
and there wasn't half the development there in that area today because I drove through there again uh, just to refresh my memory and uh, this is our biggest concern there. Our tenants that are paying money for this thing uh, are just not going to put up with it. You know, and here again, Federal, uh, FedEx, Fed Express, Amazon coming in to make deliveries to these units. There's no parking for them. They're going to park in our parking. Okay, there's just no way it's not going to happen. So that that is one of our, our biggest concerns. And as far as this this being uh, bringing housing into it, I can almost guarantee you anybody that buys these units will never see a bus. They're not going to be using public. They're going to be their vehicles, their cars, and from what I understand, these garages are parked back to back. They're not side to side. How are they going to get in and out of this little space? And she brought up the of children in there, and there's going to be children in there, and uh, we are concerned about it. And like I said, we want to see growth and we want to see that neighborhood come up also, but Thank not in this type of development. So we definitely are against that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, next speaker, please state your name. You have three minutes. Hi there, <coughs> Steam Councilman, the women. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Ball, a resident of the Armory Gardens neighborhood and the president of the Civic Association. Um, I'm all for sustainability and development in appropriate ways. I think the problem with this is it, it doesn't, as the first couple of speakers in the city planning talked about the inconsistencies with the surrounding neighborhood and the PD request that doesn't fit in with the interior of this neighborhood as it sits. Um, the combined design change and the density concern me and have heard from many residents as a leader in the neighborhood of their concerns because we've seen kind of instances of this in other neighborhoods that have caused various problems with safety concerns and eyesores and other things of that nature that come with some of the challenges of a, a, a development like this. Um, I have a picture I'll share a little early, later that there's actually a pretty similar design just like just outside of the border, coming like a block away from this on the east side of our neighborhood of in Armenia. And I've gone by it there and trash cans and access and parking are clear that, that, that maybe there's garages, but I think as we all know, nobody really uses both their car garages for both cars. So I think people hit on it. We very much expect that that will cause overflow into the neighborhood. There are no continuous sidewalks on this current block. It has lots of sidewalks and nowhere, and unfortunately none of those connect. So it will create parking with pedestrians having to access uh, walk in the street. Um, there's already kind of a land grab because some of the other developments on the block use trash cans to save parking spots until you can get home from work those days. So there's already some competing challenges with uh, just finding parking on that street alone, which will probably drive into other areas. Similarly, unfortunately, we do have visibility risks with coming out of our neighborhood onto Armenia. I think this will continue, continue to contribute to that with many blind spots as people also end up parking kind of in some designated spots on, on the Armenia corridor, blocking the ability to look out at the oncoming traffic and, and merge into it. Um, I'll show you kind of the similar design. I mean, this is just the one I was talking about. You can see it's another shoot through, which is, is, would be the first one in our neighborhood. We don't have anything like that currently. Um, so like they said, it is incompatible and inconsistent with the residential uh, designs currently in there. You can see the trash cans, and that's this one I think has 12 units, so it's a little bigger than what this one would be, but you can see people put their trash cans out. It will block uh, ability to park there. Um, and the other, you can also see in this one, overflow into, there's no other residential on this block between Armenia and Howard. So you can see those cars are from the residents that w do live there. The other, everything else around there is commercial in nature and, and that was a morning where that was jogging and those cars were already kind of overflowing, which, you know, some parking should happen, but unfortunately on, on that block, there's not a lot of available parking to begin with. So with that in mind, um, you know, this, this section of North B already is kind of dangerous with some of the parking and, and lack of sidewalks. I uh, request that you deny the proposed rezoning, um, the PD rezoning, and then also the bonus request if the rezoning doesn't get denied. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker, please state your name. Hello. My name is Jelana Roblox. I'm also a resident of Armory Gardens at 2714 uh, West Gray Street, which you is right at the- You said it was Joanna Robles? Joe Ellen. Joe Ellen Robles. Yes. Okay, no, because the uh, you didn't you weren't at the microphone, so they can pick it up on the audio. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm a resident of the neighborhood, and I am also requesting this uh, zoning rezoning be denied um, for some of the reasons stated by the previous 
speakers, um, the obvious density issue, front door, parking, et cetera. Um, I feel the building itself is inconsistent with the neighborhood. And I beg to differ with Mr. Steve, I believe the first speaker for the project where he states this is similar to what's across the street. It is not similar to what's across the street. Across the street has townhomes with a driveway along with parking. Um, these units have the parking inside the garage, you know, along the building. Um, so parking is a major issue. Uh, as a previous speaker stated, two-car garage, great, but how many of us realistically park both of our cars in our garages? Not many of us. We're lucky if we can fit one car. Um, so that's going to leave uh, at eight units with each person having two vehicles, 16 vehicles that will be uh, utilizing parking in this area. So take half of those vehicles parking in their garage, the other half parking on the street. Um, parallel parking spots are generally about 24 feet in length. So if you have eight cars parking along the street, they're going to exceed the property boundary line of 110 feet. They're gonna be taking up about almost 200 feet parking eight cars. So where are those extra cars for the resident and their visitors going to be parking all along the other neighbor's property? Um, the garbage issue that uh, Jeff just brought up, 16 garbage cans on a Friday. Um, and per their plans, the I didn't see anything on the plan that had a designated space to store the garbage cans, um, meaning they will most likely be putting those garbage cans in their garage, which is already from the drawing looks very small and can barely fit two vehicles. Um, so those are just a few of the reasons. In addition, I also believe these plans are not consistent with the uh, City of Tampa 2040 Comprehensive Plan, specifically, and this will be my last comment, specifically page 34, land use policy 1.2.28 of the 2040 plan adopted uh, April of this year, limit the use of planned development district rezoning position <coughs> petitions to allow development consistent with future land use designation, but not otherwise not permitted in the current zoning standard. This development isn't even consistent with current or future plans. Therefore, this request should be denied. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Janae Calloway. I live at 205 North Tampania, also in the Armory Gardens neighborhood. My property sits directly beside the property in question to the west. I'm here to voice my concern about the request to rezone and to request denial of the PD rezoning. With the rezoning, the new property will be five feet from my property line in my backyard. To be clear, this project is like no other property in the immediate area. This three-story building would not only be out of character for the neighborhood, but it will also peer directly into my backyard, invading my privacy, my family's privacy, as a homeowner. In addition, there's simply not enough room for the amount of people that this project will bring. On North B Street, there's already a surplus of vehicles and trash cans that crowd the street, making it hard to turn onto the block coming from Armenia, and it creates a hazard daily. This project will also bring additional guest parking outside of the designated parking spaces, increasing the driving hazard for the area. And as a mother of a teenage driver who's just learning to drive, it concerns me. I ask that you all consider keeping this space zoned for residential multiple family 16. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. I just wanted to point out something to you that I had totally forgotten about until LaShawn put it up here. Because I had driven past the property and um, this is the notification sign turned towards the house. I don't know how far apart LaShawn and I drove by, but that's the notification. So technically, this should be a mixed notice. Just saying. Um, uh, Debbie gave me some things that I wanted to make sure I passed on. Um, this bonus agreement, the PD, you're not supposed to do it with RM16, 18, whatever. Um, she ran out of time, so I get to do it. 
Um, the other thing that Debbie didn't get to was this thing about the townhouses versus condos. And so this should be, this is supposed to follow these guidelines for the townhouses. And um, you probably want to take a look at that because there's a difference between what's being presented and what's um, in there. Um, let's see, last but not least. Um, oh, and this is the, the agreement. Um, I don't know who benefits from it, the direct neighborhoods. Oh, Pull I'm sorry, down. So can, can down? Yep. Okay, I don't know, but it's Lois Avenue, which is not next door. It's funny because I'm pretty sure this is a bonus agreement that we saw like a month ago for a different property. And it was almost the same price. It was the <coughs> one that was the night of the, um, the garden club stuff. So I'm just saying. Um, I, I was very interested in the fact that Mr. McElhinney said he changed the, I'm sorry, oh, um, the, he changed the rooftops, he changed the, um, the density, they changed the setback, they changed this and that and the other. And, but my, my issue is, why was it wrong to start with? Everybody knows that West Tampa has an overlay. Um, we got some issues with parking and I think some of that was resolved by moving the buildings around. But, you know, I, I've got to agree with Debbie that putting sidewalks in front of garage doors is just a death trap waiting to happen. You can't send a little person back there without somebody running them over. I mean, hell, you can't even see the garbage cans most of the time. I've hit garbage cans. They'll tear up your car. And these, of course, are pictures of the, the townhouses right across the street. It's ugly. And... Um, why people don't park, I, I don't understand why they park on the street. Oh, wait, there's no parking spaces for them there. Um, so, <coughs> you know, my big thing is, where are they going to put the garbage cans? And I'm going to tell you that's a problem in my neighborhood. Most of you have been there. And I think that um, we need to address that because they're 36 by 33. So you're talking about 18 square feet that have to be dedicated to your trash cans and your recycling bins. Where do they go? You can't put them in the garage. Are you going to drag them through the house to get to your backyard? Because these fences don't open to the individual property, so you're going to drag the garbage cans through? And you can't even back up in there. I mean, I could. And I'd like to also say there's one of these down the street from me, and it turns over at least once a year, four or five of the units. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, is there anybody? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. You have three minutes. Sanchez has four names. I'll, I'll try to read them off. Uh, Janice Katz, thank you. Sharon Ginwardi, yes. thank you. Beth Cotter, yes. And uh, Robin Lockett, thank you. Four minutes plus three equals seven. Yes, okay. ma'am, please state your name. Go ahead. Good evening, City Council. My name is Sandy De Diego Sanchez. I live at 2705 West Fig Street. I'm a resident of the Army Garvin community, home of the beautiful Vila Brothers Park. Let me be clear, I am a neighborhood activist for any neighborhood that asks and calls me for help. I just happen to live in the Armory Gardens community. I am a volunteer. First, I'd like to talk to you about the, this uh, first picture, number one that I gave you. This is an overview, like, an, uh, like a bird's eye view looking down. If, when you see North B, you can see the four uh, duplexes that are across the street. There are 11 driveways there. That means there is no parking on the south side of, of the north side of the street. And because of those, there's no parking allowed on the south side of the street. Do you have something on the overhead? Huh? Do you have something on the overhead? No, you should oh. have these. Yes, okay. Page oh, one. No, I you did. Okay. Page one. Uh, so you will see the proposed unit, the, the green and white one that's there that's onto the alley. Next to it is another three unit that's on the uh, books coming, maybe coming before you, I don't know. 
there's another duplex coming up. They just broke ground. The one uh, further down to the south of it is, is just about to be finished. There are, this is the alley. There are three duplexes, that, two duplexes are there, which means there's a total of, of um, almost 12 cars that are using the alley. There's businesses on each end of this alley. So just wanted you to understand what's coming into that neighborhood and why we're so opposed to this unit. Ms. Pointer also showed you a picture of, let's see what page it is. Let's go to page two. Page two, it shows the block on North B and what it looks like in the mornings before trash comes. The trash cans are there and look at the parking that's on, the illegal parking that's on the streets. And if you also notice the bottom left hand picture there, there's a boarding house on that corner, which is another eight or 10 cars. Basically, there is no legal parking on North B nor Campania. We've also thrown in, just for grins, you get a copy of the, um, of the, the parking statutes in the city. The neighborhood and friends that spoke before me showed that the development coordinator for the city of Tampa found numerous items to be inconsistent, including that it does not blend in with the surrounding community. I've shown you the overhead shot with the completed projects and work in progress that give you a view of the density and parking issues. There should be little doubt that adding this project to the mist would at be utter chaos. We've also showed the existing parking areas that including trash cans. Imagine on recycle day, a total of 48 trash cans out on the street. And just as a side remark, the United States Postal Service does not require that their people get out and move those trash cans to get their mail. If, if you're blocking your mailbox, you don't get the mail. We've explained the reasons why this project will not accommodate 16 to 20 cars. If you look on page four, again, as Ms. Pointer said, please note, this is a one-way driveway. There is no exit to North B. So imagine in the morning leaving for work and somebody who's coming in from work that has worked the night shift, what is the protocol? Who backs up? Who goes first? What do you do with somebody who's coming out to walk their kids to school? This is a driveway. It's not a patio, okay? It's impossible, and as was shown, the picture that she showed of the other one that's on 2315 North A, I talked to the people that park in the street. That's 12 units, and it's five feet wider than this proposed project. I also have two city staff that rode with me to show that you cannot make that turn into the driveway unless you back out a number of times. So when I asked the people at that who were actually living in a tunnel design why they parked in the street, they can, and because it's easier. Because when they come home from work or if they've been out playing, the last thing they want to do is have to seesaw into that parking. This design will present chaos. The city of Orlando has banned this design for this particular reason. It causes chaos within the units. They cannot utilize the parking space that is there. The applicant actually added two more parking spaces for guest parking, but guess what? Those are gonna be taken up by the second car permanently. They're not gonna be any uh, cars that are gonna be there for other people to use. We have shown you the example of the other, other tunnel one, and um, we've shown you all the reasons why this is gonna wreak havoc within our community. There is no guarantee that, that they're gonna be able to park in this, and we have proof from the other one that is existing down the street that it does not work. This is a poorly designed project. Also, this is not affordable housing. It is non-affordable housing crammed into a very small box. Another example of putting too many eggs into a small basket. 
For all of these reasons, please deny this applicant's request for rezoning for the PD. Oh, one more thing. If you go to page... I believe it is, very quickly. It'll show you the overview of PDs. Page five. Please note, those are all PDs, I mean, excuse me, RM16s and RM18s. There are two PDs on Armenia Avenue. This area alone between Arowana and Armenia has 15 duplexes and three triplexes. None of them needed the PD zoning to build those. This PD is frivolous. It should not be allowed. Please deny this. This design and all the issues that I have mentioned will be chaos, bring chaos to the Armory Gardens community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? There's nobody registered to speak online. Any questions from council members? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Dock? Yes, Council, thank you. LaShawn Doc Development Coordination. There are a couple of items just to point out, Council. Um, one is regarding the height. Um, it has been mentioned that 35 foot um, height is allowed in the residential area um, by the applicant. Um, just note that um, that is correct. 35 foot is the maximum height, but we're looking at the, mess the massing that is proposed, the three story structures that are proposed and that is listed within the staff report. Um, one thing also just to mention, um, I know that there was a request to submit the conceptual elevations um, that were provided by the applicant in color. Um, those um, were not submitted with the original packet. So if that is the direction of council, I would add that to the um, revision sheet um, if it is council's desire to approve. But I just would need to know if that is the direction of council. If we get to that point, I would make that motion to include it with the revision oh. sheet when we get to that point. Okay, thank you. And I have the revision sheet ready. Thank you very much. All right, much. thank you. <coughs> Mr. Michelini, you have rebuttal. Mm, thank you, sir. Um, I listened uh, very carefully to what the neighbors were making comments about. And, and if you look, look at the exhibit that they provided, This townhouse project has all the driveways on North B Street, every one of them. And the criticism that I heard was, we're using the alley. Well, I, I don't have a choice. You know, if the West Tampa overlay says you must use the alley, I have to use it. Um, there are townhouses here. There are all of these townhouses here. I, you know, I, I'd be happy to not use it. We had one concept that showed uh, us using front driveways on North B Street, and we had staff objections, and we changed it. Um, this is uh, Tampania 2303, or 203 North Tampania, was just approved at 35 feet. Here, here's what it looks like. Three stories. Um, this is Arowana, three stories, 35 feet. This is right around the corner. So, I, you know, when we, we start talking about massing and scale, the scale has to do with the height and the intensity and the setbacks. We're meeting all of those requirements. So I don't know how we got to be inconsistent because we meet the requirements that are outlined in the West Tampa overlay. This is a picture of, of the townhouses directly across the street with the driveways on North B Street. You know, we changed that. Here, here's the picture that they showed you looking down the street. And our, our subject site is immediately here to the right. There's another one. And I don't think that you can attribute what happens with some other project with, with solid waste and with um, garbage cans and, and access. We, we widened the access so that you wouldn't have a problem with accessing the rear on this alley. We recognize that if it requires additional improvements, this development has to pay for it along that entire block of the alley, I mean, not, not just one. Um, 
the bonus provision there was some comments about that that was reviewed and approved by the legal department um, if it didn't meet the code they wouldn't have approved it excuse me Sandy excuse me I mean would you hold my time please please hold this time you know I didn't interrupt anybody else, and I didn't speak over anybody else. And it's rude and inconsiderate to do that. I don't appreciate it. It interrupts my train of thought, and they really shouldn't be allowed to do that. It happens all too frequently, and you get comments from the back of the room, comments about I'm lying or I'm misrepresenting something. It's not appreciated, and I would appreciate the chair to stop it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Vehicular access on the alley is, re is a requirement. I have no choice. <clears throat> um, whether you have a commercial office building, which one of the gentlemen said, he has to access the alley. Uh, the alley is 18 feet wide. We've added two additional visitor parking spaces. And the transportation department found it consistent. If you'd like to ask Jonathan Scott uh, about our consistency finding, he's, he's here. Uh, the density is what, it, what is allowed under the comprehensive plan. The planning commission went to great lengths, and I read into the record all of the different findings that they had, finding consistency and compatibility. Um, the West Tampa uh, code is the one that made us move the buildings to five feet instead of seven feet. The guest parking we've added, we doubled the number of spaces that were, were required uh, just to make sure that we didn't affect any off-site properties. <clears throat> um, I heard things about solid waste pickup and garbage cans. Um, we have to provide that. Those issues will be handled at permitting. There was no issue that I'm aware of regarding any inconsistency or incompatibility with meeting the West Tampa except for the, the front door facing uh, for all the units. Uh, again, I think, you know, this diagram speaks, speaks volumes about compatibility. You can't, you can't come in and say it's not compatible when all these other projects are already here and they're arguing about how they, how they don't meet the code or how they're inter, inter, impacting the, the, uh, the residents. I don't know how you argue both ways. I greatly appreciate your consideration. I think that we've addressed the issues regarding staff and and the neighbors uh, as best we can. And I've shown you that there are other projects of similar size and scale immediately adjacent to this property. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, so you just said you showed that there are developments close that are size and scale, but at the very beginning of your presentation, you said you need this waiver because the development is unique. So which is it? It, it is unique because of the orientation of the doors. There, there, it doesn't have to have all of the different conditions. I mean, this. Um, well, the, those do too. So I, I'm just but saying. But they didn't. But, I, but, I don't know how or why they were approved. I, I, I have no idea. But I showed you. I showed you that one at 203, which is immediately adjacent to this property, immediately adjacent to it. I don't believe that's been approved yet. I think that was it, the it's point. Been, it's been approved. I don't know how it could have been approved if the doors. I, I, yeah, was, I'm going to have to ask staff about that. Has uh, that project been approved? I have a letter of approval if you'd like to see it. That would be really interesting because that doesn't look like it has doors facing the, <laughs> facing the street either. So we would have had to have seen that. I'll be happy to share the letter with you. Can you show us a letter? Yeah, I'd have to see I'm, the letter. I'm getting it. Just a second. All right. Could you, Carlson? Could you point also to this, this map and show us where it is on here? You said it's adjacent. Which one is it? Sorry. Right there to the left. That's highlighted in white. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, but there's no door, so that couldn't have passed without our approval. Was it administratively? It couldn't. It may have not have been the doors. That's why. Sorry, it's sorry, folks. Excuse me. Sorry for interrupting. Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. If you have questions. Please direct them on the record, and if it's appropriate for staff, please do so to get the response properly said on the record. Thank you. Council, it, it may have been a staff approval. I will ask the staff. Staff, was yeah. this approved administratively? Yeah, that's what I asked. 
Yes, LaShawn Dodd Development Coordination. This was through a design exception one. Now, that was granted yes. for the orientation of the doors. So if they're allowed with the design exception one to do orientation because this is a PDE, is that the reason that it's not a design exception for them? Like that's unclear. Why would, why would it, why if the waiver is for the doors for this project but not for that project? Well, there's a couple of things. So currently the property is on the arm 16. So they could go to, to permitting um, and develop under the RM16 standards. Um, they're requesting an additional unit. Ah, uh, okay. Seven to eight. Okay. And uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That answers my question. W when this was originally submitted, there were other waivers uh, that were involved, which we've removed uh, pursuant to meetings with the staff. Okay. So at yeah. the at the, the time, that, that was just my question. It was about uniqueness. At so the time, the PD was the best route. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Clendenin and Councilman Henderson. Um, I know you said you'd resolve this out of the fact, but I mean, as I looked at the design, so let me state some of my positions as, as I look at this at first. I, I agree with the assessment because, you know, I'm about building on um, transportation corridors, so I'm very sensitive to that. And, and, and I'm also, I, I look at this as a step down density area as we, you know, part of our problem is we build out Tampa and, and conform with, with prior building patterns is we have these very narrow commercial corridors and we don't have an ability to step down density away from those commercial corridors. So I look at, at these types of developments that are in close proximity to these corridors as an opportunity to build, you know, to create these step down densities. Um, but I'm, I'm also keenly sensitive to um, some of the concerns that the, that the neighbors had expressed. Um, specifically, again, this, this trash can issue. I know you can say you could resolve that after the fact, but what are the solutions to that? If there's no in the driveway, you're definitely not going to be able to put them in the driveway, and you can't put them in the garage and still accommodate the required parking. So where are these trash cans going to go? There's a code requirement that they have to be screened and stored on site. Um, so you have to, in order to get through permitting, you have to show exactly how that's going to happen. I, I don't, I don't know, it's not, you can't waive that. That's not a waivable issue. Is, 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 uh, is staff good with that answer? Not to be shown on the, on the develop, on the plan? Um, yes, LaShawn, well, Doc Development Coordination. What typically happens is on the internal um, dimensions of the garage, they're providing additional space so they could be stored inside the garage. And that is allowable. Uh, yeah. What is it? What are the depths of these? Of these what are the size of these garages? So the site plan doesn't show that. Uh, Miss Dot, mm -hmm. can you show us where on the garage, where the, what's the width of the garage? It's not on the site plan. No, I. Oh, this is your paper. I'm sorry. No, it's on the bigger. Plan. Mr. Michelini, while she's looking, can I just ask you a question? Why didn't you just, why didn't this property get build a um, design bill for seven instead of eight? The, the owner wished to have additional unit. Um, I don't have any other explanation other than they wanted one more unit so that the, part of it has to do with design, part of it has to do with construction. Um, I'm just curious because that could have given more room for parking for a guest and other areas that people have gone with the seven to eight. I mean, <clears throat> I can see in the um, larger units. I think one of the differences is is that the other taller um, structures on that street um, that face the street is like one or two units. I, I, I think that's what it was looking like. Um, let me see the back. I, I just put my mind up way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I know it's four units, duplexes in the back off the alley. They're at least 20 feet wide. They have to be in order. 
Yes, you, LaShawn you, Dock Development Coordination. Um, 18 by 20 mm -hmm. is the measurement for the garage, inside the garage. And so that's, that's only built, just big enough to accommodate barely two cars, right? Barely one. Yeah. But, so, I mean, if, if, I mean, not that I'm a, uh, an architect, a, a design architect, but that, I think that's just barely enough to fit two cars bumper to bumper, cheek to cheek. Yeah. Sure. Transportation. Jonathan's here. So, how do we have, do, so with that, those dimensions, how much excess room would we have for an average uh, vehicle? Uh, Jonathan Scott, uh, mobility transportation. Now, the, they do have a note of compliance that they have to do the curbside enrollment to the, and they're required to store those in the garage. Now, we scaled the dimensions based on the site plan. We, we estimated it to be 18 by 20. Now, that does leave a little bit of room, but we didn't have them show exactly, you know, but uh, we, we can have them do that. It's so just it's, so you basically just showed the room to require the required parking, not not the extra room for others. That's that's correct. In this case, we didn't have them do that, but uh, they they'd be required based on the note that they have uh, for solid waste. Solid waste collection shall be curbside. The tenant of each resident shall be responsible to roll the refuse cart to and from the curb collection and should be stored within the cart screening enclosures or inside the buildings. They're, they're, they have a note of compliance that they have to either screen them. Or, or keep them so it could the be a, if, if this if if it was the will of the council to approve this project, it could be it could be a council condition that that first floor be redesigned to accommodate both the, the room for both vehicles and gar appropriate space for garbage. Correct. I don't know if I can answer that. Yeah. 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 Yes, LaShawn mm -hmm. Dock Development Coordination. That could be a condition for the applicant to provide the dimensions on the interior between first and second reading to call that out on the site plan. Okay. Um, and just to make sure it's providing enough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It could also be in an enclosure outside of the garages as well. So if council's willing to make that motion, it should be to show the accommodation of solid waste. Is that something that's within our current code that I would permit something like that in this type of development? The Jonathan Scott Mobility Transportation, that they have an order of compliance, and that is a requirement uh, per the code that they have to screen it from the right of way. So basically, they have the option of either putting it inside the building or putting it in an enclosure. That's a requirement of the, the code. But in like a multifamily development, and really that's kind of like two lots that we're turning into eight, is, is that within code to be able to put that many garbage cans outside in a screened place in a residential, residential area? The, the requirement is just that they have to screen it from the right of way. Okay. And it's uh, their lot to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, sir. No. Well, the, uh, the, the items that were shown in the other area in the vicinity, what are the sizes? How many units are those? And what size property are they? I don't know. I mean, we see these things here, but nothing tells us yes. the amount of units or the size or the length or the width or anything else. Well, the note on this plan is just eight townhouses, and these are three unit townhouses, and it looks like there's seven, looks like there's seven units there. Um, the one that just got approved on the Campania that I showed you is, is right here. Right where? It's right in here. It's right in, immediately adjacent to our property. All right, anything yeah. else? And then there's other ones. There's a house, yeah, way out houses, the apartments, townhouses, duplexes. So I'm, I'm just having, I'm struggling I'm to find how. The same size for the same amount of units. Not, not or, or more. I mean, the same number of units or more. I don't, that's why I'm struggling to see how it wasn't compatible. But I appreciate your consideration. See, I mean, I, I I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. So I'm, I kind of, um, you know, I'm struggling with this as well. I'm actually okay with the increased density. 
Um, in fact, you know, I, you've got entitlement there for density. It's how it's developed out. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to look into this Orlando situation about because I'm not particularly a fan of this type of development either. But um, that's not for me to decide right now whether you know whether I like it or I don't like it. Um, it's whether it complies with the you know the, the scale and conformity with the neighborhood. I do agree that we need to be done with this. Is, these is areas that, and I know some of the neighborhoods not going to like that. But it, honestly, in the city of Tampa right now, because of, you know we're going to continue to grow. If you live adjacent to transportation corridors, your things are going to change. So we and, and some of this, especially is, is the next properties over, should be you know step down density areas, and this would definitely conform with the step down density. Um, I, I just. How, how could you how could this have been designed did you have proposals to design this property that you would not require a PD well when it started off yes uh, because of the West Tampa overlay we would have faced the, the driveways onto North B Street um, but how many units you would have had four units that faced North B and then four units that would have been in the back if you had eight units uh, and four in the back that would have faced the alley. And, and, what, and why did that get reject? Why did you reject that or pivot from that? Because we ran into objections from the, from the urban design section regarding the access and usability of the alley. So you know, we're in a catch 22 here and, and we've discussed this before in, in front of council that if, if you meet the West Tampa overlay and you don't have a functional alley, then you have a transportation objection. If, if, you, if you meet the transportation uh, issue, then you potentially have uh, an urban design objection. Um, it's something that, this is sort of an aside comment, but the council should really look at um, the usability of alleys and, and, how, and how the West Tampa overlay is applied. Um, it's very difficult, and as I said, this, this project started off almost eight or nine months ago, and it's been through three or four different uh, reiterations, and each one tried to, to eliminate waivers, and that's why uh, when, you know, it came to you, and I've, I've stressed with my clients, we need to eliminate the waivers and, and restrict them to very few, as few as possible, so, so that you're not faced with making hard decisions about do you accept this waiver or do you not accept this waiver? Um, so we've tried to minimize that. And, and the effort that you see before you this evening is, is that result of that effort. Yeah, well, clearly this didn't come before me because I would have I would have rather seen the, the forward facing and the rear facing units, one facing the outlets, one facing mm -hmm. North B and you know an well, I mean, urban design. But 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 I mean that's just my preference and no, I avoid this PD because you know how I feel about PDs. No, you know, I understand, but you, you right. can see the issues that we're struggling right. with, and some of the West Tampa overlay restrictions in, in the code are not compatible with the wishes that you all have, have expressed. And so then we're faced, and the staff is faced with either finding it consistent or inconsistent uh, based upon what we've, what we've tried to do. So we're, we're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't. Um, it, it's a difficult position to be in. And I mean, I... I with all respect to the council, I hate that, that you're put in a position of trying to, you know, figure out how to how to split the baby, and the, it's just a difficult situation. But uh, we try. Councilwoman Hurt. Um, so I just have to ask. I mean, you had to come with to us with with waivers at some point. Why didn't you just decide to come with that? Because I'm with um, Council Member Clendenin. If it had been four in the front and four to the alley, I would have had no problem. I would have given you the waivers for the for the driveways. Well, you can always continue the hearing. We come back with a revised plan. <laughs> That's I can't do that. After two hours. Uh, I'm just saying that. Well, you know, I, I'm just curious why you choose one waiver over another. I guess is because. Three, you know, two months ago, we ran into the, exactly the same issue, and council was <coughs> upholding the West Tampa overlay as opposed to. But that the, was a single family home. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's well, it was a townhouse project. No. Well. So, I mean. Would you, so, if, if, so with, the, with the rear facing well. units, did you have issues with the turn radius of vehicles? Was it, was it a shorter driveway that you couldn't use? Is that. 
We would have had a, a, a smaller area between the two uh, buildings, so it would have been more compact, but um, we did have the minimum distance off of the alley for the other four units, for the, for the driveways I'm talking about. Anybody else? Councilman Hurtat? Yes, sir. Sir? All right. What is the pleasure of council? We have a motion to close from Councilwoman Hurtat, second Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Council Member Hurtat? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to start denying these. Like, I'm going to wholeheartedly, this is not the design we want to see in our city. We do not want to see streets built into blocks. Mr. Shelby. Um, I'm, I'm just speaking my mind. Well, I, hmm? then I'm going to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for doing that is because I'm going to ask you to not make generalizations. Well, And that, that may be for another time for a policy decision in another place. Here on the record, you have this proposal that's in front of you. And you have the criteria. I suggest that you look to the criteria, and you suggest, and I suggest that you apply the facts as you yeah, find them to be. And I will. I, I appreciate that, but I'm going to caution you, and I'm going to caution the rest of council, that in order for you to make this decision, and for whatever decision you make, to withstand legal scrutiny, that you do it based on evidence in the record and not on a blanket generalization. Thank you. Um, but this is constant, this is consistent. Um, and we, we are constantly seeing these, these projects that, that communities are concerned about. So I'm gonna move to deny REZ 22-76 for the property located at 2406 West North B Street due to a failure of the applicant to meet its burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence that the development as conditioned and shown on the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan and code and the applicant's failure to meet its burden of proof with respect to the requested waivers. Um, mainly that uh, uh, the applicant testified that this development is unique and in need of waivers, but also testified that this is similar to other properties surrounding it. Um, the subject to site is surrounded by single family detached uses to the south, east, and west, and single family semi detached to the north. The introduction of the two three story structures for a total dwelling of eight units does not promote or encourage development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood. Specifically, when you look at the photos that were given to us and put into the record that staff showed, um, that photo that was actually also used by the applicant that showed all of the street frontage and the houses facing the streets, even the ones with driveways, walkable, very street facing, and then you look at the property and the pictures that were provided that show two frontages and then a big piece of concrete that is not a, is not a driveway, but is also not a house. It is not, um, there are no, there's no accessibility with sidewalks. Um, there's, no, there's no break between the doors and the, the, the um, garages. Uh, so I am, I am very concerned with that. Um, one of the reasons I particularly dislike this project is because the entrances face that interior corridor instead of sticking with the seven foot setbacks to have the doors facing the outside. Um, this is much more dangerous. So, uh, and that goes along with the, the fact that um, it, it, uh, it is not um, unique and does not fit. It just ultimately does not fit when you look at the block. Can I add? Do we have a second? Second. Can I? Um, oh, I'll let, um, uh, the, the section of the code is 27-136, um, purpose of the site land controlled area. Um, that's the one, but I'll let um, council member, it sounds like he wants to add something. Yeah, just from the excerpt we were given uh, from the staff report, at t section 27-136, the staff report um, highlight mm -hmm. says, uh, this PD request for eight single family attached units is out of character with the surrounding neighborhood. And um, it says that the, um, the elevation submitted depict three story structures which are incompatible with the built environment. And um, the proposed development of eight units is not appropriate in location surrounding parcels which contain one or two units. And um, also the requirement that um, 
uh, ground floor entrances, front doors to the dwelling units face a street right of way, not including alleys. And the staff report says this standard is not met as only two, as only the two most northern units front doors face North B. Um, I'll accept that amendment um, and add uh, that the Planning Commission staff uh, also found that it did not. Wait, um, the Planning, Commi Planning, Com Planning Commission found it consistent, the city staff found it Yes, consistent. but, but Planning Com um, Commission staff said in theirs that both doors are oriented, so they did not, they did not put into context the other six units because they used the word both. So I don't, uh, that's why I find their staff report is inconsistent. Well, the stand, the, they're finding, so you're disputing this, you, you dispute, if I understand you correctly, and I'm not testifying, but the saying, if I hear you correctly, you're saying based on what you just stated, you're disputing the finding of yes, consistency. I'm, yes, I'm disputing the finding of consistency because they didn't, they didn't rule, they didn't look at the actual plan. And Councilman Carlson, what were you quoting those findings from um, before when you said? It was the, the evidence, yeah, the city's, it was an excerpt of city staff report as presented by the um, neighborhood representatives. And that's in the staff report? From, yeah, from, um, and, and part of it was from section 27-132, sorry, 136. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, it is not consistent with land use policy 9.2.6 with respect to the orientation of front entrances. We have a motion from Council Member Hertak with a second from Council Member Carlson. Let's take a roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Plindinen? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion to deny carry unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Thank All right, next up we have item number three. Yes, sir. Now it hurts. We'll wait a moment for the room to clear a little bit. You want to take a, a recess? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, yeah. We're going to take a, a yeah, five-minute recess. Pizza. So. <laughs> pizza, pizza, pizza.
please. Carlson? Here. Hertek? Here. Clendenin? Here. Henderson? Present. Vieira? Here. Miranda? Here. Maniscalco? Here. We have a physical quorum. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Item number three. Good evening, Sam Thomas, Development Coordination. Uh, this is agenda item number three, REZ 2328, a request to rezone 3707, 3709 West McKay Avenue from residential office to plan development for single family attached. The authorized <laughs> agent is Mr. Michelini, and I'll turn it over to Emily with the Planning Commission. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site is located within the South Tampa Planning District in the Gulf View neighborhood. The site is surrounded by multifamily and like commercial as well as residential offices. Uh, some of the commercial is located along South Dale Mabry and also some of the res commercial and the residential office is located along Swan. This is the future land use map. It's represented by the residential 20 designation. The site is surrounded by the residential 20 designation and it transitions to CMU 35 along South Dale Mabry and also along Henderson. Attached single family uses are encouraged in the R20 designation. Due to the presence of multifamily uses in the surrounding area, Planning Commission staff finds the use comparable and compatible and the request will continue to maintain the stability of existing areas while expanding opportunities for housing choices supported by the comprehensive plan with land use policies 9.5.1 and 9.5.3. The site is presently vacant and the comprehensive plan encourages compatible infill development on vacant and underutilized land. LU policy 9.2.6 encourages attached single family to be designed to include the orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk or street. The proposed entrances are oriented and connect to a sidewalk along West McKay Avenue, meeting the intent of the comprehensive plan. However, if approved, Planning Commission staff requests that the applicant label all front doors and sidewalks between first and second reading. The proposed plan development would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding uses and is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the residential 20 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Any questions? Thank you very much. All right. Yes, sir. All right. We'll start with the aerial view. So here's the subject site outlined in red. It is along West McKay Avenue. It is to the west of Henderson Boulevard, but to the east of South Del Mabry Highway. Um, the zoning around the subject site is largely residential office and commercial general. Your commercial is found along Del Mabry Highway and Henderson Boulevard. And then you have the residential office to the south of the subject site and to the north, um, to the east and west, and then the commercial general as well. As you move north of Swan Avenue, you do have some residential single family 60. Um, directly next to the subject site is multifamily, here and here. Here is the site plan provided by the applicant. Uh, so the applicant is proposing six um, units and two different buildings. Both of the buildings are oriented um, to the nor or let's see here both the buildings are oriented to yes or oriented to the south with the entrance off mckay avenue units one and two um, face mckay avenue while the rest are internal there are pedestrian connections along the outside periphery of the subject site providing those connections to mckay avenue um, the site is um, providing 14 parking spaces and 14 parking spaces are required the subject site is 13,438 square feet or 0.31 acres and the max building height is proposed to be 35 feet. Um, as Emily noted earlier, the subject site has a residential 20 future land use designation and that allows the site to be considered for five units or six units with a bonus agreement. Um, the applicant has entered into a bonus agreement for the one additional unit for an amount of $21,669. Here are the elevations of the subject site. This would be looking from McKay Avenue. This would be looking from the rear of the site. This would be looking from the internal driveway. 
and this would be looking from either side of the parcels next to the subject site. Here is a picture of the subject site. This is the east side of the subject site. This is the west side. This is that multifamily um, that I spoke about earlier just west of the subject site. And this is the other multifamily just southwest of the subject site. Directly east of the site, you have a swim school. Then directly south of the site, you have an office building. And then north of the subject site on Swan Avenue, this is what the subject site backs up to, is an office building. And here is the site plan again. The applicant is requesting two waivers, one to reduce the required use to use buffer from, 15, from a 15 foot landscape buffer with a six foot masonry wall to eight feet landscape buffer with a six foot PVC fence on the north side, a three foot landscape buffer and no wall on the east side and to reduce the required five foot landscape um, buffer to three feet on the west side. The second um, waiver is to request to allow the front doors to face the side yard property lines. Development coordination and compliance staff reviewed the application and find the request inconsistent with the land development code. This is due to findings from development coordination and natural resources. While the single family attached is compatible with the area, the applicant is proposing to demo all existing buildings on the subject site, providing them with a blank slate to design buildings with a more appropriate design that would not require waivers while requesting a bonus agreement. You can review the findings from development coordination and natural resources relating to the waivers requested in the staff report. Natural resources analysis can be found towards the top of page three, and development coordinations analysis can be found on page four, item six. Should council approve the request, the applicant must provide revisions as stated on the revised revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm available for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much. Applicant? Good evening, Council. Steve McElhaney, uh, and I have been sworn. Uh, this project consists of uh, removing two offices, <clears throat> and as the staff has pointed out, it's uh, immediately adjacent to and surrounded by... by commercial offices. Uh, and I want to kind of take you along a little tour here. Um, this is, uh, this is Sterling here, and this is McKay here. And this is, <coughs> this is McKay immediately adjacent to the subject property. This is at the corner of Del Mabry and McKay. This is across the street. This is the parking lot. <coughs> um, that's across the street from the subject property. There's the subject property. There and there. There's more offices. This is immediately adjacent to it on the um, on the west side. This is the apartment building. And there's a picture of the apartment building. And then this backs up to the property. This is the Verizon uh, cell phone store. This is across the street. This is down the street a little bit to the west. And there's another picture of it to the west. The proposal is for, <clears throat> is for six units. 5.35 or something can be built by right. The request is for the bonus provision to allow six units. It meets the parking code. The height is limited to, to uh, 35 feet. <clears throat> All of the parking requirements are met. Um, the two offices um, are to be removed. Let me just give you a little aerial orientation here. Uh, 
this is the parking lot to the north and it backs up to the subject property. This is a better view. This is, gives you the, the apartment building here, apartment building here. These are the two buildings to be removed. And this is another office daycare immediately to the west. I lost one. Again, aerial view, Henderson, Sterling, uh, Del Mabry is right over here. This is Swan Avenue. And the property backs up to uh, an apartment building with, with a parking lot. So a different view, a little closer in. Apartment building, proposed uh, redevelopment site here, and the other offices down the street. This is a site plan. Um, there's no alley or access here. This is all off of McKay. And we're providing the green space and the uh, visitor parking as required. As the staff has pointed out, the R20 is designated as a redevelopment area. This is uh, not, there aren't any single family residences anywhere around here. This is all uh, commercial or multifamily. With respect to, uh, to meeting the code, <clears throat> it says to promote, uh, and this is the staff report, promote the efficient and sustainable use of land and infrastructure. <clears throat> it was found that we do meet that requirement. I think that the issue regarding the, uh, the buffers and the landscaping, when you look at the surrounding properties, what are we buffering from? We're buffering from the back of an apartment building, a parking lot on the north side, uh, or an existing building <coughs> on, the, on the east side or across the street. Um, <clears throat> from the, um, the commercial properties over there. Allow the integration of different land uses and densities. <coughs> the applicant was requesting uh, to, to meet that uh, through the R20 future land use designation <clears throat> as, again, five units by right, one unit, additional unit through the bonus density. Encourage flexible land development. The site is designated with pedestrian walkways surrounding the building, which takes the residents out to McKay. <clears throat> promote and encourage development where it's appropriate in location. There's probably fewer sites that are, that are better suited for that than this one, uh, just based upon the fact that it's surrounded by commercial and multifamily. <clears throat> promote the more desirable living conditions. Uh, this will take an underutilized property, which is the, uh, the two residential offices, and convert them into uh, housing. We are, far, we are below the uh, residential 20 designation, um, <clears throat> and the uh, FAR is 0.5. It's based on the acreage that we're allowed. It's, uh, it's 6,719 square feet. The subject property is surrounded by multifamily, light commercial, and residential offices. The objective that we're meeting is regulate the levels of building intensity according to the standards and land use designations in order to meet the projected population of 150,000 people and 157,000 employees by 2040. Use limited land resources for efficient pursuit of development pattern more economically sound. This is an underutilized parcel of land, and by putting in a, a townhouse project, we elevate that usage <clears throat> and, and make it more compatible with the surrounding property development. Improve the pedestrian connection through excellent uh, urban design. We are less than half a block off of Del Mabry, less than half a block off of Henderson, and we back up to Swan. So this, if you're familiar with this, the, uh, this area is, is very heavily commercialized. All existing and future land development regulations should be consistent with a comprehensive plan. We have met that. 
development shall not exceed the densities. We are not exceeding the densities and the bonus provision allows for that additional unit. Each land use category shall have a unique set of zoning districts which may be permitted and this is permitted. The housing is permitted under this designation. Ensure that there's an adequate amount of land planned for residential purposes to accommodate projected population. Um, this is an underutilized parcel uh, which will in increase the intensity of the development and allow for more residential. Encourage single <coughs> family attached and multifamily de developments to be designed and include orientation to the front doors. The front two units face McKay. Um, the other four units do not. They are interior oriented, but they do have connecting sidewalks. And the sidewalks are on the outside of the building, not in the drive aisle. You can see that on the site plan here. <clears throat> Generally, the location of single family attached shall be limited to the periphery of established single family detached neighborhoods. However, Single family attached may be considered and demonstrated it's integrated. There aren't any single family detached structures in this area. They are all commercial, either multifamily or office uh, uses. And as I said, we back up to the, uh, the parking lot for another multifamily project and we're diagonally across from the, the back of the Verizon um, cell phone store. Generally, the location <clears throat> or the intent shall be minimally, minimal, minimally disruptive to the adjacent areas. This will not have any adverse impact on any adjacent properties as they are all either more intensely developed or equally intensive. Maintain the stability of existing areas while expanding opportunities for housing. It meets that criteria. Protect the low density and single family areas that provide opportunities for home ownership that are attracted to households. There aren't any single family houses in this immediate vicinity. Ensure the adequate supply of housing, designate the sufficient land for residential growth and, and accommodations. Continue to monitor this as it moves forward. Um, the two offices are to be removed, which are underperforming and add very little to the, to the economy in this area. The housing will provide additional units. <coughs> It's the uh, policy is to encourage residential designation and we're below the residential 20 designation. The planning commission has reviewed this and found no adverse impacts on the surrounding neighborhood and the request proposes six attached single family units which all meet land use policies 2.1.2, 9.2.1, 9.3.8 and land use policy 9.26 encourages attached single family developments to be designed to include the inter orientation to the front. And we've done that uh, except for the four units. We have a five foot sidewalk proposed uh, along McKay and the connecting sidewalks from each of the units um, going to connect to McKay. Additionally, the subject property is vacant. Uh, however, it encourages compatible infill development on policies 1.3.1, 1.3.3, 1.3.4 and land use policy 2.12. Uh, and the conclusion found by the Planning Commission was that if the approved that the uh, Planning Commission had asked to label the, label the front doors and sidewalks between first and second reading and they did find it consistent. Um, this property is very similar to other properties in the area. Uh, I believe that we have met the intent of the code and uh, it, it transforms an underutilized parcel and makes it more conforming and it makes it more productive for the neighborhood. We respectfully request your approval and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much, sir. Is there anybody from the public? Yes, sir. Can you, can you go through the setbacks on that? I tried to read them, but I... It's kind of difficult. It's a lot seven of seven point five nine. This okay. is on the uh, on the west side. Okay. And three feet on the east side. And there was a six foot PVC fence proposed over here, and a PVC fence over here. This side is the apartment building side. That's um, that's three feet from the sidewalk. What's what's from the building? That's that one. But I mean, so if we go back to the, the, the site plan, 
Is that three feet from the sidewalk or is that three feet from the building? From, from the from the building. This is three feet from the from the sidewalk and this this is uh, seven, eight, almost eight feet, seven and a half feet from the building. There's a four foot buffer being provided here. And then there's a three foot buffer being provided over here. Okay, so I'm, I'm so, I mean, maybe, so from the from the lot line to the building, what's lot that distance the on, on the other side? I see that side. What is that? Seven, seven point five. It looks like the sidewalk included. Okay, okay. That's why I, just, I I couldn't read that. That's it's, why I just it's not. three plus four point five. Right. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Okay, that's that clears it up. Thank <clears> you so much. Um, just for the record. Uh, we have not received any calls or comments regarding this project, and no one has called or, and expressed any concern. Thank you very much, sir. Public comment, if you wish to speak, please state yes, sir. State your name. Come up. Wait, wait, come up, come up. approach the uh, lectern first of all I'd like to apologize I had to bring them uh, due to some technical issues but my name is Dayton Birchfield um, and I'm uh, speaking against um, specifically due to the presence of watermelon swim school directly adjacent to this property um, I feel like not enough uh, survey has been done with regard to the amount of traffic that occurs in this neighborhood um, specifically directly next door to the west. Watermelon Swim School handles 30-minute classes. There are six people, there are six parents and toddlers per class, 30-minute periods, on top of an entire two, three more other classes with a total of 12. So a total of 18 children in the pool every 30 minutes. The parking lot pictures that were presented are very misleading before the council. Um, there, all of those parking lots directly adjacent are full. <laughs> there are cars in the lot directly across the street to the south. And the entire area is very busy, specifically during, during and immediately after rush hour. Um, and, and including on weekends and late in the <laughs> evening. You're okay. I just wanted that to bring that to the council's attention, um, as it does not seem to be well represented within um, the the documents presented, and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Absolutely. Yes. All right, next speaker. Yes, sir. Hello, council. My name is Bob Whitmer. I'm the executive director of City Tree. Um, this is a picture from the City Tree satellite that we have high above Earth. And it shows a couple of trees. One in the front, let me move it down so that you can move it up so you. That's one tree in the front. I'm curious what's going on with that. There's a big one in the back. I'm curious what's going on with that. And uh, since we're having to fight for the canopy one tree at a time, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up as a possibility that might have been overlooked. And uh, you all can ask if uh, Natural Resources has anything on this. I won't take any more of your time. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Aaron. Go ahead. Not yet. Not yet. Go ahead. Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. I'd like to point out that this driveway is uh, four feet narrower than the plans we saw earlier today. Let's put our 18 square feet of garbage cans in there and see how those fit. Um, it was probably vacant. I love it when developers come up here and tell us that it's vacant land. Well, you showed us pictures with buildings on it, so it's not vacant. Um, a three foot buffer. Please tell me how you're going to paint that building. Seriously, three feet. This wide. Those guys are going to paint that building in a three-foot buffer because he's going to put a fence there. So that 
you know what's going to happen? They're going to take the fence down to paint the building. What happens if there's a stucco problem? You got to take the fence down to fix the stucco. If you got a broken window, that'll be fun. Um, but you know, I, I just wanted to point out some of the, the like obvious stuff, but you know, South Tampa's full. Nobody was evacuating from those two offices. Just saying. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak on item number three? If not, we will ask uh, Aaron a uh, question real quick uh, regarding the trees on, this, on the site that were shown. Uh, yes, uh, Aaron Mayor, Development Coordination. I don't have his image, but the tree that was in the front, is a, it was a street tree. That tree is being preserved. The um, one that was on the bottom part of the photo. Yeah, along okay. the right of way. The tree in the back was a 30 inch uh, live oak that was submitted and removed under a dangerous tree letter. So it was already removed? It okay. was, yeah. So, okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions from council? Uh, there was nobody else registered, Mr. Michelini of Rebuttal. <coughs> uh, council, here's, here's a picture of, the, of these swim schools adjacent to the property. You can see back here is the property that's be, to be developed. Uh, w we can't be held responsible for off-site parking for another business and how they operate or what parking that they're providing or how many students that they have. Um, I can tell you that our property will have the required number of parking spaces plus visitor spaces and that there's no waiver on solid waste. We have to meet the code. <clears throat> so I don't, um, I drove this property several times and um, drove her all the way around the, the entire perimeter of this property, all the way from Swan to Dale Mabry to Henderson to Sterling, and personally did not find any incompatible use that would in any way, that this project would in any way adversely affect um, anybody else. And as I said, we've received no objections from anyone. Um, no one's called, no one's said anything. And the gentleman, I understand, is concerned about cars going in and out of a swim school. I can't control that, and I can't control off-site parking requirements. As you see, if, if you just look at that, their parking either backs into or drives into the right-of-way on both sides of the street. Uh, if they were to go through a rezoning or permitting, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. So, anyway, <clears throat> our parking is compatible. It does meet the code, and uh, we respectfully request your approval. Any questions from council? I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, no? Can we have a motion to close the hearing if there are any questions? Uh, motion to close from Councilman Vieira, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Councilman Miranda, would you like to read item number three? Uh, we've closed I, the public hearing. Yes, I've got a comment okay. um, to support uh, um, before you make the motion. Um, I, I'm ultimately concerned about this because it's, it's, they're asking for more, and the people who came up talked about things that our staff mentioned were a problem. The, the um, area around the property, not enough green space, and then the waiver for doors. Um, I don't think it fits in the space. I think that five units might fit, but probably four would fit better. Um, I think we're just trying to shoehorn too much in to an already busy street. Thank you very much. Councilman Miranda? We closed the hearing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. In order to rezoning property in general vicinity of 3707, 3709 West McKay Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly scribed from section one's zoning districts classification R01 residential office and <coughs> BD plan development residential single family attached providing an effective date. Is, uh, there's a revision sheet as well. The uh, compliance and goals, uh, this is REZ 23-28. Compliance of the goals, I, if approved, the subject site would be developed in the density of 19.3 acres per unit, which is consistent with the density applicable 
uh, under the residential land 20 use land des designated and will continue to maintain stability in existing areas while expanding opportunities for housing cho choices, which is, which is supported by land use 9.5.1 and 9.5.3. Regarding the code section 27-136, a proposed development has shown that the site plan promotes and encourages development that is appropriate location character, compatibility, and surrounding neighbors. For waivers, the design of the waiver's development is unique and therefore in need of waivers. The requested waivers do not substantially interfere or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by the waiver. Is there a second? Second. We have a second from Council Member Vieira. We'll do a uh, roll call vote. Hertek? No. Clendenin? Oops. I, I, can I explain my vote? Go ahead. Uh, okay, well, the hearing's closed, but if he just speaks, he's not asking questions. I'm not asking questions. Can I explain my vote? Okay. Why not? I, I yeah, I, um, you know, I, I, I've made it very clear that I'm not, I think that we approve PDs way too often in areas of the city of Tampa that doesn't make sense to the development of the city of Tampa and that people should be developing their property in accordance with Euclidean zoning and not seek these special exceptions. Um, that being said, on this particular piece of property, um, the area is, is developed so e eclectically that it's, um, you know, I, I, I don't feel like it's stressing the neighborhoods, uh, a neighborhood specifically. It, ideally, I would have liked to see a better, a better development. I'd like to see a better bu a building, but I'm not, it's not up to me to make that decision based on land use and, and where we're at right now. But uh, in, a, in a perfect world, I would say I, I, I would vote against this, but I'm going to say yes. Thank you. Okay. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? No. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carry with Hertek, Carlson, voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Located at Old City Hall Building, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. All right, item number four. Thank you, Council LaShawn, Doc Development Coordination. Item number four is REZ 2350. This is for the property located at 2529 West Curtis Street. Um, the applicant is represented by Truett Gardner. The request is to rezone the property from RS50 residential single family to RO residential office. And I'll turn it over to Emily to give her report. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is located within the Central Tampa Planning District in the St. Joseph's Hospital neighborhood. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. Mr. Shelby. Yes. I did not receive a notice, but I live right here off of me. I'm, I'm a block away. The only thing that separates me is uh, that white building that you see right under the parcel in question. And I'm, I'm not the first unit on the third unit in. I think maybe I didn't get the letter, maybe the uh, HOA got it or the HOA president and I didn't get it to my mailbox. If it's a condo, a condo association, I suspect you would have gotten a notice for that. Is that correct? And you did not get, do you, would you say you live more than 250 feet away? If I look out my window, I can see, I can probably see it. I mean, maybe some trees are in the way, but not look out my window. If I open my front door, I can look directly across at it. Council, if I may, the notice is sent to the owners. So it's yes. the property ownership as listed in the property appraisers. So you're not in the notice area. My question to you is, can you... I can be fair and impartial. However, I don't, you know, out of an, an abundance of caution, I see, you know, I'm just right outside that 250 feet. So in other words, is it... 
and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but are you asking whether you should or you want to, let me rephrase it, do you want to abstain to avoid the appearance of a potential conflict of interest and to assure a, uh, a, a, fair, uh, a fair proceeding free of, um, of bias? I can be fair and impartial, but out of an abundance of caution, I mean, it's, it's, it's right there. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't, you know, but. Is it your desire to abstain? W am I within my legal rights to abstain? Would yes. It open? I am. Okay, because it is right here. My wife parks <laughs> right here. You know, I mean, I can. Thank you for disclosing that. This, Thank you for disclosing center. that, and uh, you wish to abstain. I'll, I'll prepare the, uh, uh, okay. the paperwork, and you'll fill that out at a future uh, meeting if I can't get it done in time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, okay. All right. Um, okay, I'm just going to restart for the yes. sake of it. Um, Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is in the Central Tampa Planning District and the St. Joseph's Hospital neighborhood. Uh, this is the subject site right here, and it is predominantly residential to the north, and there are commercial uses along um, Havana and also further uh, east just right outside of the aerial is North Armenia, and these are commercial uses as well. The subject site is here represented with the Residential 10 Future Land Use designation. That designation is to the north, east, and south of the subject site. The dark brown color along Habana is Residential 35, and further to the east along um, North Armenia is the CMU 35 designation. Commercial uses can be considered in the Residential 10 Future Land Use Designation if the subject site meets commercial locational criteria. Commercial zoning represents approximately 58% of the block face between North Habana Avenue and North Armenia Avenue. Planning Commission staff has determined that the site does meet locational criteria. Land Use Policies 1.2.8 and 15.2.4 encourage a range of uses in proximity of each other and requires commercial development to be buffered from residential uses. The proposed rezoning will not have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood. The comprehensive plan promotes pedestrian safety and encourages commercial development that enhances the city of Tampa's character and ambiance. The Tampa comprehensive plan promotes compatible development and redevelopment to sustain stable neighborhoods and ensure the social economic health of the city. With those in mind, the proposed RO rezoning would allow for development that is compatible and comparable to the surrounding area. And this concludes my presentation. If you have any questions. Any questions? Next. Thank you, Council, again, LaShawn Dock, Development Coordination. And um, this rezoning request is to um, residential office, um, which is a Euclidean request. So at the time of permitting, all standards must be met. Um, this is the um, zoning map for the area. Um, this is the location which is identified in red. This is Curtis Street. Um, just to orient you, this is Havana that's on the west. This is Armenia Avenue. Um, you can see along Havana where you have the um, residential office. Um, those are the typical uses that are on Havana, the medical office uses. Um, and then there are a couple of um, R01 zonings that are there. And then as you head further east and on Armenia, you have more of your commercial uses that are there. Um, but this immediate area is um, historically for medical office uses um, that exist. The site has a frontage of 125 feet and the um, length is um, measuring at 226 feet. Um, I have pictures of the site just to show. So this is the site on Havana pretty wide, so this is the other end of the site. This is east of the site, single family residential. So this is the view, if you are on um, Curtis, you're looking east, so the site is on the picture off to the left. This is um, on Curtis, this is across the street, so this is south of the site. That previous picture was the parking for this <laughs> facility, which is at the corner of Havana. This is west of the site, so this is Havana. That's the view if you're looking north on Havana. And then we're swinging back around. This is west of the site. 
at the corner of Havana, and then this is directly west of the site. The site is to the right in this picture, outside the picture. So the development review staff has reviewed the request and finds the request consistent. I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions? Hearing none. Okay, Representative you. the applicant. Thank you. Good evening, Kirk Gardner, 400 North Acid Drive. I have been sworn. Um, honored to be here on the behalf of Dr. Cabrera Cancio. I've had the pleasure of representing her for over 12 years. She's uh, an infectious disease doctor and does absolutely wonderful things for our community. This is her uh, primary office. She has other offices as well. And our request is for Euclidean zoning. Euclidean, not PD. We meet, uh, we have no need for any waivers Someone was at listening. all. Someone And, um, <laughs> Normally, we're here in front of you with complicated PDs, but this is a very clean one. And the request again is RS50 to RO. And we've got a slide that'll show you just how limited that zoning category is. And then finally, at our last hearing, we're supposed to be heard in July. We requested a continuance. We had sent notice out to everybody within 250 feet, I guess excluding uh, Chairman Maniscalco. And, um, and Dr. Cancio went and spoke with all those neighbors that she could within that. But we got a concern uh, that was raised to us the night before the hearing from the clerk's office. So we requested a continuance to meet with those neighbors outside of that boundary, which we've done. That has culminated in a letter that I wrote today, uh, making some additional commitments that we'll submit for the record. And with that, uh, again, location, LaShawn did a great job of pointing out Habana being this medical corridor I um, want to point out St. Joe's to the south. Dr. Cancio's practice has nothing to do with St. Joe's, but is, it is within this medical corridor. And then next slide, it highlighted with the star is the property in question. You can see the medical office to the west, uh, parking also to the west, and then to the south is medical office, which encroaches further into the neighborhood than, than what we're proposing today. Next slide, the development intent of this, and to clarify something, is not for medical office. It's purely for an administrative office, so far less intense, will serve as a transition to the neighborhood, and it will be servicing the office building of, of Dr. Cabrera Cancio's to the west. And then just one additional aspect of this is there's an abundance of parking on her property to the west, and so to further protect the neighborhood, all parking will be provided within that parking lot and, um, and not on this site. Next slide, again, I've mentioned how limited the RO use is, and I know that on the slides that LaShawn showed, she showed some RO1. RO is even more restrictive. So you can see here when compared to RS50 current zoning, really the only thing that's allowed is office business and professional. And we could have, we, we have a PD immediately adjacent to this, we could have opened this up and put this property within the PD, but that PD actually allows for medical office. So going the RO route was even more limiting because all we're allowed is office business and professional. As you can see directly below, medical office is not a permitted use, nor will it be. And then finally, I uh, just want to report consistency from all organizations, including development coordination, the planning commission, and notably transportation as well. So here to answer any questions you may have, and thank you for your consideration. We've got uh, the project architect, Antonio Amadeo, and then Dr. Cabrera Cancio that we'd like to speak as well. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. The neighbor to the south has written a letter of support that I'd also like to introduce into the record. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I guess Mr. Moncalda stepped out, but honorable members of the city council. Uh, my name is Antonio Amadeo. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Attorney, I have not been sworn, so if you take the opportunity to do that. Is there anybody else? Ex I do. Um, Thank you again for the opportunity. Um, I'm a registered architect, and I've had the pleasure and privilege. Can you state your name one more time? I know you didn't uh, before you were sworn in. But. Yes, Antonio Amadeo. Thank you very much. I've had the pleasure, pleasure and privilege of knowing Dr. Cabrera Cancio for over 25 years. 
from her work at Tampa General Hospital when I was director there and over the years uh, in the, for the greater Tampa community. Um, I can attest to the quality and attention to detail uh, to every project she undertakes, which is truly a reflection of her character and the care for her patients. I'd like to show you evidence and enter into the record examples of before and after pictures of the immediate and adjacent area to 2529 West Curtis, which attest to the quality and attention to detail specifically as it pertains to this application and the beautification of uh, Curtis Street and the surrounding area. Uh, I'd like to start with the elevation of the proposed property, which in character doesn't change. There's no addition to it. There's no modification other than improvement of the property, as you can see. You can see this. Uh, can you see that? Yes. So um, new windows, um, new landscaping, new fencing, and, and, uh, and overall attention to the beautification. I'd like to also show you before pictures of the immediate air areas that uh, um, you can see over here. This is a property of the existing, uh, adjacent to the existing, or actually within the existing property of, uh, um, of uh, 40, uh, 4929 Habana. So you can see on the top where it was and now when she, she purchased a property, how it's beautified and how nice it looks and now in 2023. Uh, continuing also uh, the before picture of North Havana and West Curtis 2012 and, and now uh, in 2023, a beautiful green area with, with preservation of the trees. Another picture of Havana and West Curtis uh, where, where existing structure was and now it's all it was uh, in really uh, terrible shape, so it was uh, decided to be removed and just uh, improved as a landscaping. And this is another view of the same area. <coughs> this is the area adjacent to the subject property where it was um, uh, also in, in, in poor landscaping shape and now it's been improved to accommodate the parking of the um, existing office space. And this, as a reference, this is the, sorry, this is the elevation of her existing offices, medical offices, which all are also in character with everything that she has improved around the property. So um, I'd like to, to uh, ask you for your support and approval of this application. And if there's any question you may want to ask me, I'll be glad to do that. And then with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Uh, Margarita Cabrera Cancio. Thank you for the opportunity. We, um, we are a medical practice. Uh, we are a private practice, a rare thing today, but we are not associated with any hospital, any healthcare group, or any insurance. We're totally independent. Uh, our name is Infectious Disease Associates of Tampa Bay. We have 15 physicians, five nurse practitioners, and we employ 70 individuals at three different locations. And all we're trying to do is improve our uh, medical office because we need to do some renovations inside to better the patient care that we provide. And all we're asking is to move our administrative personnel that is only six to eight people to this house and we're gonna beautify it and uh, make it, uh, and it's not going to take, it's not any, for any, pet, any type of medical care or any, anything else but administrative duties and we're not planning to have anybody park uh, there. This is, this is only for administration. Um, we have gone through both Curtis and Osborne. I have talked to as many of the um, individuals that live in the different houses to make sure we answer all their questions and have left pamphlets and open our office for them to come and ask us any questions. We really, I really appreciate your support on trying to allow, allow us in our office to improve the care that we provide to our patients by moving our administrative office to the new location. Thank you very much. Councilman Miranda. This has nothing to do with this zoning, but I've been here a little bit of time and 
I remember the first rezoning on Osborne. We did that about 20, 15, 18 years ago. And you had a problem, not your problem, the neighborhood wanted a no turn gate, and you did that. I remember that. So I just, I'm not vouching for this, I'm just telling you, you did it in the past. So congratulations to you. <coughs> Any other questions? And is that all from the uh, applicant? Yes, Truett Gardner, 400 North Athey Drive, but only to state that I feel like I'm getting as old as Council Member Miranda when his stories are stories that I was a part of too. So, so thank you. Well, you're evidently you kept your hair. <laughs> it, it's graying quickly. <laughs> okay, uh, public comment. Anybody here from the public? I'm sorry, excuse me, but these pictures that were from the prior speaker? They were from... Um, Mr. Yes. Your name again? From Antonio Amadeo. Thank you. Architect. Coming up to the podium and uh, state your name. You have three minutes. Sure. My name is um, Adriana Encinas, and I am speaking on behalf of my grandfather, who lives adjacent. So... Oh, is he there? Yes, he's in the back. May I have And sir, where are you? Thank you very much. One additional minute. So you have four, four minutes. minutes. Um, so my name is Adriana Encinas, as I said. Um, in the pictures that you saw, one of the properties next to it, the beautiful red house, is my grandfather's. He's owned that property since 1968. So we have seen what this area and this community has become. And what we have slowly, unfortunately, over the years seen is businesses and medical practices eating away at these <laughs> residential areas. As you can see in that picture, it's already small. You're going to take another single family home to turn it into an office space, from what I'm hearing, administrative. Why? There's already another property. They own another building on that property. If we're talking administrative, we're not seeing patients. Why can't this be done from home? Why isn't this remote? Why are we trying to take another location to have another family come in to build their family like I'm doing? I live six houses down from my grandfather, so I actually live on the street as well. Um, for, com for office spaces that I'm hearing they're gonna walk through an area that does not have a sidewalk through grass when it rains to get to the office, I find that very hard to believe that they're not gonna park on the property, okay? And the other issue that we have with both of these, I know you pointed out the gate on Osborne, the amount of speeding that we have on Curtis, I cannot have my children in the front of my house for fear that they're going to get hit by a car and the number of times that we ask individuals to please slow down and I get branded a weapon when I am trying to raise my family in an area that for people is just a pass through. This doesn't happen in your neighborhood. If this happened in your neighborhood, you'd be standing here saying, we don't want it. That's what we're saying. We don't want to lose another home someplace else that can become a family moving in to office spaces for an area that already, she owns the entire end piece. You're telling me you can't use what you already have if all you need is something temporarily for administrative offices. That just makes me think that what's the future plan for this is not what's being said. They're presenting something to you for right now and they're going to come back and they're going to turn it into something that is not what's intended. And they said that they, oh, they passed pamphlets out. The only reason they passed pamphlets out is because they found out at the last meeting last month there were some of us who objected because as the district, but two councilmen who <coughs> who abstained, we didn't receive anything either. Neither did, the only one who received was my grandfather. That's how we knew. So please don't allow another family home to be taken away. We want more families in this area. We want to raise our kids here. That's why we live there. That's why you live where you live. You wanna raise your kids there. That is our hope. That's our intent, not to have another business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Hello again. So you're both speaking, so you get six now. Uh, yes, that. that's exactly <laughs> correct. <laughs> State uh, your name, you have three minutes. Dayton Birchfield, I live at 2518 West Curtis Street. Um, so <laughs> as, as my wife said, we live um, exactly nine address numbers down the street from her grandfather. We in fact lived with him for over a year um, while our home was being built down the street. 
we are very aware of the issues that happen with regard to high-speed transit down our street. There have been a number of issues that have come up as a result of that. It's been reported to the police department. It's been reported to the city, to transportation. <laughs> and we are concerned about the transit down the street. At, um, currently, and I don't have a copy of the image, but they, you were presented an image that shows a um, sidewalk going down the street. However, at present, there is not a sidewalk. There is, in fact, no very poor access to the front of the house. Um, and to that point, um, there, is in, there is, in fact, a fairly impressive drainage ditch, which will force individuals to walk down a unimproved street with no sidewalk present to access the property. So I'm going to throw that. If you guys can see that. So also, this photo was taken just the other day, and that sign was put up in front of the house, which um, does not stay to the uh, nature of the property. Additionally, as you can see in the image, here's the drainage ditch that runs through the, prop through the front of the property where there is a proposed sidewalk in the images that they presented. <coughs> oh, I apologize. There you go. So, also, for the last, um, the Habana Real Estate LLC has owned the property for 18 months. And up until uh, the hearing on July 22nd, did not reach out to the community. They reached out to the minimum 250 feet with no regard for what, it, for what effect it would have upon those of us who live on the street that they're proposing to build on. People race down the street into their office parking lot with regularity. In fact, to the point that I have documented it. Now, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, so I haven't complained about it too terribly, but it is an issue. And the fact that people are going to be going to work in that space, the Tampa, the Habana Armenia corridor through Curtis Street is a problem and is something that we wish, that we wish to have present, uh, protected for our children to continue to live in that neighborhood. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And rebuttal? Oh, wait. Well, you have somebody. I didn't see you standing over there. I'm so sorry. It's all good. I've lost a oh, we got two later. more people. Never mind. So I'm no. going to be the guy that called baloney on this because it's baloney. And I like you guys. I don't want to see you taken for granted. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Can you state your name, Bob please? Whitmore, Executive Director, City Tree. So this is, this is the property. And this is the doctor's office. And this is trees that I will be fighting for eventually because she owns that. All right, so what we've got, now, and they also own that house right there, which I don't know why they're not turning that into executive offices. I mean, it's right across the parking lot. But I'd like to say that I am from the future, and you believe me, because I'm from the future, and I want to tell you what's going to happen. We're going to tear this down. And then what they're going to do is they're going to have this big piece of property on the corner here that they can actually put a Walgreens, a CVS, who knows what, they'll come in, they'll rezone. So I'm not sure that there's anything a tree guy can say to stand in the way of this. But I just want everybody to know that we see through this, all right? And I know you guys do too, and you can't say it because you sort of have to stick to a script. But this is baloney. Nobody's going to renovate that house for corporate offices. It's not going to happen. And what they're going to do is they're going to tear down the house, tear down the house, and I'm going to have to come back here, and I'm going to have to save a carbon suck like that that is exactly what we are trying to save in the city of Tampa. So I'll let you guys make your own, uh, your own call on this one. But I just want to let you know we're on to it. Thank you, sir. Next. State your name. Uh, my name is Carla Hartley. I live at 2525 West Curtis Street. Uh, my concern with this is the continued encroachment into the, into the neighborhood. 
Um, if this happens, I will be one of, the, one of three remaining residential spaces on that side of the street. And uh, I think eventually it's just gonna be me sandwiched between some Ebola and the podiatry guy down the street. So my concern is that it's just gonna continue and continue and I will be left with nowhere to, to thankfully my children are gone. Um, but so I don't have to worry about that. But I do have a concern about the continued uh, property value as a residence as this moves forward. Thank you. Next, state your name. Good evening, uh, City Council. My name is Colby Enloe. I'm the practice administrator for Dr. Cabrera Cancia's office. I wanted to um, share this. Um, there we go. I, I wanted to share some information of my efforts of getting support from some of the neighbors on this rezoning. Um, I have three letters that I'm going to um, submit on behalf can, of can the Can you hold following. on one second, Mr. Shelby? Yes. Would, is this, would this be considered part of uh, the plaintiff's rebuttal or is this public comment? Well, that's the question is, well, I was contemplating that myself. How long had uh, the presentation gone? Do you know how much time was left? Um, they had about five, five minutes, and some time, five minutes and 13 seconds. Well, rather than have it count against rebuttal, we can have it count against their time. But for future reference, it really should have been part of the same presentation. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, so this is, we'll just consider this part of your initial presentation. Take it away from that time. Sure, sure, Garden 400 North Ashley Drive, just to clarify what. Colby is doing is uh, on behalf of these neighbors that supported it. He's just reading their letters in. So it was letters of support from neighbors, which we why we didn't make it a, does, does he a live part in the of our case. Does he live in the neighborhood? He works in the neighborhood and he Colby is the one that talked to the surrounding neighbors and, and garnered their support. Okay. And so on behalf of those, he was just yeah, reading can we just, their can we just receive and file these? Sure. I'll hand those if Colby, if you just want to show the map just so they can see the proximity. There you go. These are the three homeowners that sent us letters of support with the green checks. Um, we could, we could take that map with the letters sure. in the receiving file. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? I neglected one item that was fairly important. I had a few moments left. We saw somebody online. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know that that would be appropriate. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I don't think that. I, I'm sorry. I don't think that. This is so Am I able to submit them? Yes. Please start writing to the opposition. I have letters. Of, I have a, a note that can you Can you hand them to Mr. Shelby, please? It's an electronic copy, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we, we can email it. I can email it. I don't know. Mr. Shelby? Well, <laughs> it could go into the quasi box. Qua um, at this point in time, I can't think of a way to put them into evidence now before a decision is made. Right. Uh, if this does move forward, you will have an opportunity at second reading. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay, I'm sorry, Clerk. I understand we have somebody online. Yes, we do. I see Sean Williams. Can you hear me? State your name, please. Sean Williams. Can you, have you been sworn in? We've raised your right hand, please. Let the clerk swear you in. Do you? Other right. Other right. Unless your camera's confused. <laughs> I only have one free hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you have three minutes. State your name, and you get, if you could speak up a little bit louder, please, so we could hear you. Okay. Hey, uh, my name is Sean Williams. I live on Carter Street. Uh, the uh, the people that uh, the doctor came with, uh, her LLC manager, business manager, uh, the guy, the last guy he was trying to speak uh, for, um, to present, and that was one of the first times that I heard about this. Um, that's neither, not necessarily neither here nor there. Uh, 
So the, I don't remember the first or second person that talked on this issue talked about a range of uses in the area. That's part of the plan. And a range of uses is medical. I mean, that's not necessarily a range of uses in this neighborhood. There's one range of uses in this neighborhood for the most part, and that's medical. And adding more medical, I don't think, really follows along with that particular uh, idea. Um, on top of that, uh, I think uh, future use, the future use concerns that others have brought up is something that I'm afraid of, that there's gonna be a slippery slope sort of situation where you're having, we're gonna have it zoned RO now, and then we're gonna bump it up to commercial later and uh, add on to more space uh, to add on to <laughs> The ability to, for people to work from home administratively, it is so easy to work from home even with HIPAA. I know people do medical coding and billing on that and it's real simple. I work from home a lot of times, which brings me to another point. When they came around to people around the neighborhood, they did it in the middle of the day when people aren't usually gonna be home from work, which isn't necessarily outreaching to the community. So I think that's about all I've got. Um, I'm just concerned that their future use is gonna be not necessarily what they're saying it is, and that they're gonna be leasing it back under their LLC to their doctor's office as sort of a tax thing to just to kind of add on. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there's nobody else online, correct? <laughs> okay, that's the closing uh, public uh, comment and applicant, do you have a rebuttal? Yes, thank you. Truett Gardner, 400 North Ashton Drive. Um, certainly respect the comments and concerns from the neighborhoods want to clarify one thing. Um, there is no neighborhood association, so all we had to go by at first was the 250 feet notice area. Dr. Cancio can attest to this again, but she went to each of those neighbors. Only when we heard of the concerns outside of the 250 feet did we request the continuance and then go immediately to them, um, literally the next day. And it seems like the biggest concern raised was traffic. And on this, and I, I believe, uh, the gentleman spoke to this in 2020 there were calls made i believe by him perhaps other neighbors as well complaining about traffic and speeding along curtis the city went out and did a study and what you see here in, in good gator colors uh the black line <laughs> dotted line is the is the speed limit of curtis which is 25 blue represents eastbound traffic and orange represents westbound traffic they examined this for 72 hours and straight and what they determined was there was no speeding problems on this street at all the case was closed the file was closed and um, our traffic engineer and our office reached out when this concern was raised to see if we could get this this was the finding what is in my letter today is an offer from dr cantia cabrera to utilize our traffic engineer in-house to reach back out to the city to see if we can work together and look at this again to see if there is an issue and if there is to work with the city to address it. So I think that's their biggest concern. Um, and again, competent substantial evidence was done by the city to determine there is no issue by our traffic engineer to confirm that and then also transportation and its staff report finding consistency. Uh, sidewalk was mentioned. I know this is not a PD, so we can't make certain conditions. Um, but Dr. Cancia says it is their intention to put a sidewalk in in front of this street. So just wanted to state that for the rec record. Uh, valuations of properties, this was raised in the conversations. We went out independently and got a real realtor who specializes in that area. He studied it and determined that there is no negative effect when you have residential located next to office or commercial, even including medical office in this neighborhood. As a matter of fact, if you're adjacent to it, there's actually an enhancement in value, perhaps because of the possibility of that becoming commercial. And so we can provide that for the record along with all of his research. And then lastly, the encroachment into the neighborhood. If you'll recall the earlier slides and also the information provided by um, Ms. Dock, immediately to our south, it actually encroaches further than, so we're going no further than that. And again, to the south is medical office, we are asking for RO, which does not allow for medical office, and only for administrative offices, which will serve this medical office. And we were found to meet locational criteria. Again, findings of consistency on this very topic 
from Planning Commission as well as Land Development Coordination. And then lastly, just wanted to state for the record, there are no conspiracy theories here. There is no baloney. Um, Dr. Cancio Cabrera can speak to her intentions and her needs, but that property immediately to the west is zone PD. The reason why, which I stated before, we did not open the PD to put this property within it is to provide the protections for the neighborhood and solely to request RO, which specifically does not allow for medical office and only allows for administrative offices, which is what we're requesting tonight. So with Thank that, you. Dr. Cancio has one other statement to make okay. and we'll close, but appreciate your time and attention. Doctor? Yes. I thought that the comment about the trees was really interesting since if you look at what I have done in the corner of uh, um, Havana and, and Cortes is to make it like a park and we have carefully kept every single tree and keep it beautified and have and we, have, we, we could build in there extra buildings and we chose not to do that. So that's one point. Number two, there also is interesting, the point about uh, working from home. If you have 70 employees, we do have a lot of people working on, at home, but there are some administrative individuals that have to be in the office. There are some functions that have to be in person. And we're only planning to have six um, individuals in that, in that property. And we're only trying to provide better care in, for, for patients and I very much would appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, motion, to close. motion to close. Second. Second. Uh, we have a motion to close from Councilman Vera, second from Councilman uh, Charlie Miranda. Any discussion? Do we have a motion? Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Mr. Vera. Yes, sir. Oh, for the close. Or it's already clo it's closed. There's no discussion. Oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can make a motion on this. Uh, yep. Go, go for it. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I move an ordinance presented for first reading consideration ordinance for rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2529 West Curtis Street, City of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification RS50, residential single family to RO residential office, providing an effective date. I find that the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent substantial evidence and that the rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city code. Also adopt the findings and reasoning of the planning commission uh, and the staff reports, uh, including the compliance with applicable goals, objectives and policies in the comprehensive plan, uh, as noted in planning commission staff report and compliance with land development code. Was it, is it appropriate to make a, uh, a, 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 a oh, okay, oh, I have to set up the question first. As for the sidewalk to have that as part of this motion, they are, the the applicant volunteered to make but make it part of the. Well, then I think you should reopen the hearing and have Move a conversation with the uh, okay. the applicant. Move to reopen. And and also to talk with staff as to whether that's part of the site plan. There is no site plan, Kate Wells oh, right. Legal a, Department. True, there right. is no site plan. They're okay. not requesting a PD that's approval. Right. Right. So with the Euclidean request, so, okay. that's, there's that's, not that the was, opportunity to add. That, that, that was my question. I didn't know. Okay, very good. I, I so withdraw. Do we, have, we have a motion on the floor. Thank you, Ms. Wells. I'll move to close. Excuse me. <laughs> second. Yeah. Okay. And so we still have a motion on the floor. <laughs> you got to. You got to. Get the motion to close. Oh, sorry. All in favor of closing. Aye. Aye. Opposed. And I restate the go. motion, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I, I remake the, do I want me to read no, it all no, again? No, oh, no, thank no. you. Okay, and do we have a second? <laughs> we have a motion on the floor from Councilman Vera, a second from Councilman uh, Miranda. And can we have a roll call vote? I'm sorry. Can you state the motion? I picked it as when I was running down the hall. Um, it's just a motion for number four, uh, moving to pass number four. Oh, item number okay. four. Yes, yes, go ahead, no problem. Roll call vote. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? No. Maniscalco? Abstain. Motion carried with Carlson, Hertek, voting no, Maniscalco, obtain. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. <laughs> All right. Good riddance. It's right in front of you. Huh? It's right in front of you. I know. Uh, can I do it? New right business? now. Right now, I'd like to uh, go ahead and follow this form AB uh, regarding my uh, 
Am I abstaining from the vote? Receive and file list. Move to receive and file. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Huh? Second. Yes, you made the motion. Receive and file. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. Um, motion to receive and file. Carlson Well, who made the motion? Uh, I made the motion. Well, I can't. Yeah, but he didn't pass the gavel. Oh. Oh. I made the motion. And then well, let's counsel. do it formally. Let's just okay. do it over. We have a motion to receive and file. Quick. Second. Motion to go Carlson receive and file second for Councilman uh, Miranda. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Quickly. Item number four. Item number five, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Not number five. Go Thank ahead. you, Council LaShawn, Doc Development Coordination. Um, item number five is REZ 2349. This is for the property located at 6603 South Trash Street. Um, the applicant is represented by Cami Corbett. The request is to rezone the property from PD Plan Development, um, which currently allows for residential multifamily, to PD Plan Development for residential multifamily use. Um, I'll turn it over to Emily to give her report, and I'll come back and give my report. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is within the South Tampa Planning District and the Port Tampa City neighborhood. Uh, portions of the site are located within the coastal high hazard area. Uh, the subject site is here, very large. Um, the surrounding area is a mixture of uh, multifamily and single family detached that you can see to the north and the east as well as the south. This right here is CS CSX uh, right of way and um, this is the park. Uh, the subject site is here. It's represented by the transitional use 24 future land use designation which does extend to the west as well. To the north and the south is the residential 10, and this is residential 20, and this is recreation and open space, which is where the park is located. The site was previously approved for 205 multifamily units through plan development per REZ 19-94. Per the applicant, there was a discrepancy in the legal description of the site and the total acreage. There was a loss of a 15-foot strip of land that resulted in a new total acreage. Planning Commission staff uh, finding has remained consistent as the request remains the same. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The request provides additional housing in the Port Tampa neighborhood. Portions of this subject site are within the coastal high hazard area and evacuation zone A. Rezonings in the coastal planning area that increase the number of residential units shall mitigate the impact on shelter space and they shall continue to coordinate any hurricane mitigation payments with Hillsborough County and the City of Tampa. The adopted August 2016 Greenways and Trails Plan updated by the MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, identifies the existing CSX right-of-way adjacent to the subject site as a conceptual trail. The applicant has provided a note on the site plan addressing a future connection at the time of construction and consistent with recreation and open space policies 2.3.1 and 2.4.9. The proposed plan development would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding uses and is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the transitional use 24 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Ms. Doc. Thank you, Council LaShawn Doc Development Coordination. And Council, this rezoning um, request, um, as Emily has mentioned um, and has briefed on, so the use is currently existing on the site and it is approved, this PD is approved for residential multifamily. The request which is before you is for the same use. The site has been developed, um, but this PD request will establish the newly confirmed um, property lines with the new property boundary um, containing a reduction of a 15 foot strip of land. And that is on the northeast side of the site. Um, and um, what I can do is show you this zoning atlas of the site itself. So this is the site which is outlined in red. This is McCoy Street. 
Um, this is West Shore, just to orient you on the map, and this is Manhattan Avenue. So you can see this is the PD, um, and then you'll see the slight modification, which is of the boundary that's on the northeast side of the site. Um, you have it surrounded with RM16, residential multifamily zoning to the east, and then you have residential single family that's located north and south um, of the site itself. But the changes that are included in this PD request include the following. So due to the adjustment of the property boundary, the east side yard um, setback is now at 25 feet compared to it previously being at 40 feet. And the pervious area is 4.48 acres, um, and that's compared to the previous area of 4.59 acres. The project area overall is now 10.21 acres, and that's compared to the 10.32 acres um, previously. Um, the green space area is 160,499 square feet, and that's compared to the previous area of 165,291 square feet. Um, the units per acre calculation is um, roughly the same from 20.08, and that's compared to the previous um, 20 um, on site. So the site is developed with four buildings on site. Let me show you the site plan, which is the same, but the, um, on the site, let me scoot it up just a little bit. This is McCoy Street that's located on the south. And then you can see these are the buildings that are located on site. This is building number one, number two, um, number three, and number four. So entrance to the site is on McCoy. And then there are internal gates. Um, one is for um, residents um, and visitors. And then one gate is located here for residents only. The surface parking is located here with some garage parking. Um, and then the amenities are located throughout the site with a dog park here and a pool there. And I have pictures of the site. Elevations were submitted. They are of the same structures which are constructed. So I can just show you the pictures of the site. So this is the um, view. This is the entrance to the site. And that's a view if you're looking north at the site. That's one of the gates that's shown there. And this is headed on the east side of the site. This is the eastern boundary, and that's if you're looking north on Wall Street. Another view running along the east boundary. So this is south of the site, one of the residential single family, and then I have additional pictures south of the site. These are single family residences. And then this is further south, southwest, where Tampa Park. The development review staff has reviewed the request and finds the request consistent. There are site plan modifications to be made between first and second reading, and that's been provided on the um, revision sheet submitted. And um, I'm available if you have any questions. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to clarify, this project has already been built. They just didn't have the same lines they needed, or they, 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 the site plan is not, was not correct. So it was discovered um, through additional title search um, and a new survey um, that was done, a new survey work that the property boundary had changed. Okay. That okay, it was thank a different you. One. So, I just wanted to make sure I mm -hmm. clarified that so yes. that people understood. And administratively, we cannot approve, so of course. Have to come back. All right, applicant. Good evening, Jamie Mayer of the law firm Hillward Henderson, 101 East Kennedy Boulevard. Uh, I'm representing the applicant, and I have been sworn. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Doc, for the presentation and the staff report. I'm just going to add a little bit of background. Um, so this was an approved and fully constructed PD. The legal description that was used in the PD site plan made reference to vacated, platted rights of way, and so was subject to multiple interpretations. The survey that the PD site plan was based on at the time of approval was an interpretation that the applicant owned that 15-foot strip of land in question. And so that was included in the site plan. Um, there are, however, neighbors who have existing sheds and other structures within that area that are shown on the survey. And the applicant approached the neighbors um, regarding those encroachments. Some neighbors agreed with the applicant's interpretation that the applicant owned the land, and others um, maintained that that was not the correct interpretation and that the applicant did not own that land. And so the applicant directed their surveyor to review it 
And the surveyor agreed that the neighbor's interpretation was a reasonable interpretation, that the applicant didn't own that 15-foot strip. And so the applicant has been willing to accept that interpretation, hence the need to revise the PD to remove that piece of land from the property, and that's resulted in the changes that Ms. Dock outlined for you. Um, and that's why we're here. And um, my understanding is that the neighbors are in support. We believe this is overall a good resolution for everyone, and we respectfully request your approval. And I'm here for questions. Thank Any you. Any questions? Public comment? Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. Um, I am here because this is a case of the developer doing the right thing. Um, the, that 15 feet took like three quarters of some of those folks' backyard. I managed one of the properties and I'm friends with another one of the properties and we actually had quite a bit of interaction with the neighbors on this and the developer made offers to purchase it and one of them held out. So. Um, they are extremely excited to hear that they're here tonight um, and asking to um, leave the land where it is. Um, those folks have lived there since the 90s. I think there's six houses. Is there six, five or six? And of those, I think all of them are the original owner. So those, those houses were built. These people put up fences. They thought that that was their backyard, and then they come home one day and there's like half their backyard is gone. So this is, this is a case of the developer doing the right thing. I think it's already sold anyway, but thank you. I, I just like to support things periodically. This one, and Mr. Manassi has a letter for me for the later one, I'm going home. I'm gonna go play the lottery tonight. <laughs> yeah, me too. Anybody else? All right, um, if there are no other questions, do you have rebuttal? I just wanna say thank you to Ms. Pointer for staying to speak on this item. I appreciate it and I know it's been a long night, so thank you and thank you, Council. Can I get a motion to close? We have a motion to close from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Clendon, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council Member Henderson, would you mind reading this item? Ms. Baldwin. Yes, ma'am. I move file number REZ 23 49. And I have to finish reading this part right here. No, no, just this. This part. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I move file REZ-23-49 and ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 6603 South Trash Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification PD Plan Development to PD Plan Development Residential Multifamily, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Henderson with the second Council Member Miranda. Roll call. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9 30 a.m at the Old City Hall building, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. All right, six more to go, number six. Zain Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number six, case REZ 23-57. This is a request for a rezoning at the location 2917 East Columbus Drive. Proposed rezoning from RM24 to PD residential single family attached. Pass along to the Planning Commission. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site is located within the Central Tampa Planning District and the Jackson Heights neighborhood. Uh, the, single, the surrounding area consists mostly of single family detached <laughs> to the east and the south, and to the north and west are multifamily uses. Do I need to zoom in, Councilman? What is that, the cross street? Is it 22nd and Columbus? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I probably should have uh, helped or you out with that Or 29th and Columbus, um, okay. This is East Columbus Drive, and this is North 26th Street. 20 29th. 29th, okay, thank you. We good? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 
The subject site's here, and it's represented by the community mixed use 35 designation, which allows up to 35 dwelling units per acre. And it is, the same designation is located to the east, the south, and the west of the subject site, and to the north of the subject site, directly across the street, is residential 35. The comprehensive plan encourages infill development to help ensure an adequate amount of land is preserved, is planned to support Tampa's growing population. While the proposed density is consistent with the underlying future land use designation, the request is inconsistent with several comprehensive plan policies. Land use policy 6.1.2 and 9.2.6 encourage the design and development of single family attached projects to include the orientation of front doors to sidewalks and streets. The site plan proposes one of the unit's front entries toward the right of way, but no pedestrian connections are provided from the unit entrances to the sidewalk on East Columbus Drive, and there are also no internal pedestrian connections. The current design is a safety concern because residents will be forced to walk into the drive aisle to access the public sidewalk, which does not meet the intent of land use policies 4.3.2 and 4.3.6. East Columbus Drive is a transit emphasis corridor and the site is within a mixed use corridor. The mixed use corridor policies support walking and transit uses and the site plan is not providing safe connections to transit. Overall, the proposed PD is inconsistent with policy direction of the comprehensive plan. The PD does not engage the public realm or provide safe pedestrian connections from the three single family attached units to the sidewalk along East Columbus Drive. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions, Mr. Hussein? I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. I'll speak about that. Zoom on each one there. As you see the property here outlined in red, uh, surrounding the whole entire property is RM24 zoning. These are all a combination of residential multifamily and residential single family. If I zoom on out just a little bit, As you look to the south, you'll have the interstate. If you look to the east, you'll have East Columbus Drive. To the north, you'll have East 18th Avenue. And to the west, you will have um, North 28th Street, or north and south. I'll now go ahead and show the site plan provided by the applicant, and I'll speak on that. The proposed rezoning is to allow for the development of the property with three residential single family attached units. The subject, subject site of the property is at the south side of East Columbus Drive between North 29th Street and the CSX tracks. Vehicle access to the site comes from the north. You have East Columbus Drive. The square footage of the lot is 4,711 square feet or 0.11 acres. The maximum height is 35 feet in height and proposed three stories. The existing use of the lot is vacant at this time. The number of parking spaces, as you see, you have six provided by the applicant, one, two, three, four, five, six, and by code, they're required to have seven parking spaces, which will require a waiver. I will now show the elevations provided by the applicant. This is elevation to the south. Elevation to the north. Elevation to the east. and elevation to the west. As I went out on site and took pictures, I will show you what I saw. This is the vacant site as is. As you see the public notice sign.
directly west of the site, residential single family. If you look down Columbus Drive, you'll see more residential single family and multifamily. As you look directly east of the site, we'll have residential single family. And north of the site, you'll have residential multifamily. I will show you the site plan one more time. Now the applicant is requesting five waivers. Uh, first waiver is to allow the front doors to face side yard property lines. Second waiver is to allow a reduction in aisle width from 24 feet to 20 feet. Third requested waiver is to allow the parking to go from seven required spaces to six spaces, which is about a 14% reduction. The fourth waiver is to request to reduce the required five foot used to use landscape buffer from Oh, sorry, two 3.24 feet to the east adjacent to single family residential. And the fifth waiver is to request to reduce the rear yard from 15 feet to 5 feet and side yard from 5 feet to 3 feet. Development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be inconsistent with the land development regulations. See the findings from transportation and urban design to have this finding. Should be the pleasure of City Council to approve the application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much, applicant. Uh, Steve Michelini representing the petitioner. Uh, there was an oversight on the site plan which I discussed with the Planning Commission staff. Uh, regarding the sidewalks that were missing from the site plan and the connectivity to Columbus Drive. So uh, if this is a pleasure of council to approve this, we'll make that correction between first and second reading. The, uh, the site, I think, as the staff had pointed out, is uh, immediately north of Interstate 4 and the interchange coming off of, uh, off of the Port Authority. There is the property, it is vacant, and there's a lot of redevelopment occurring in this area. That's a better picture of the site. <coughs> this is directly across the street. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's on the back side of the street. Those are townhouses and apartment buildings. This is down at the other side of the street. It's a, some kind of apartment building. This is at the corner uh, on the east side where it's a, a series of duplexes. And then this is the street going down to the subject property. And uh, since the other pictures were taken, it's no longer uh, adjacent to a single family residential. The properties have been uh, redeveloped for duplexes. And that if you can see going down, the subject property is immediately to the left. And uh, there's a whole series of duplexes going all the way down to the end of the street. Um, as the staff pointed out, this is a residential 35. You could build three units by right. The height is 35 feet. We do have some slight elevation issues regarding uh, having to meet the flood zone areas. And as I said, the pedestrian connectivity will be resolved uh, in a revised site plan. It is adjacent to a transit corridor. Um, this area doesn't have a lot of new housing going in it. This is in the East Tampa section of town. And uh, quite honestly, I would say that it is a, it is a, it's a leap uh, to be building new houses in this area. Um, but 
there is some activity here, and apparently there are uh, there are some some builders who are willing to go in here and build duplexes, a series of duplexes all the way from the subject site going eastward from from where we're requesting um, the ability to go to three units. Um, the parking reduction is basically because of we're, we're adjacent to a transit corridor. It's a visitor parking space that we're asking to uh, to re remove. We do have two car garages for each unit. <clears throat> there are a mix of, of duplexes, quadplexes, and a series of uh, what you normally would have around a university area where you had a series of duplexes and quadplexes for housing. So it does lend itself to a little less expensive housing product. <clears throat> if I'm going to read from the Planning Commission report uh, on their findings, it all, it, it's our residential 35, so you're allowed to build the three units. <clears throat> the surrounding area consists of single-family detached. Uh, I think that that, that is, has changed now so that a lot of these areas, both on the east and the west side of the subject property or duplexes, are townhouse-style quadplexes. <clears throat> Objective uh, 2.1 is regulate the level of building intensity and the standards of land use to meet the projected population increase of 150,000 and by 2024 or 2040. Eliminating the land use resources, this is an underutilized parcel of land. Um, and quite honestly, this whole area, and I would expect that the duplexes that are adjacent to it on the east side will be redeveloped, probably purchased, um, demolished, demolished, and then redeveloped in similar style developments like this. The transformation of major corridors, including a broader mix of uses uh, and the horizon of <coughs> horizontal and vertical, that opportunities of medium and high density while addressing the need for housing citywide. Uh, as I said to you earlier, this is a, this is adjacent to just just north of of the interstate. So there's a whole series of of homes in here. Let me. You can see down here. These are those duplexes and quads that I was telling you about and apartment buildings all along in here. This area was taken before the redevelopment occurred in here. Um, so you don't, you're not seeing those new houses that I just told you about the duplexes that were being built. <clears throat> so it is an area that's, that's attracting some activity and some of the, uh, the moderate priced uh, housing products are coming out of there. <clears throat> Encourage the redevelopment process in residential mixed use and retail and commercial services. This is adjacent, as I said, it, major streets uh, plus the interstate. So it will attract some activity. We didn't receive any calls, uh, no emails, or any communication indicating any kind of concerns regarding this project. I did commit to the staff that we would correct the site plan regarding the the sidewalks and the connectivity, including the sidewalks required on the front of the property uh, with a re revised site plan. Basically, I think that this is a type of project that you would encourage to happen as an infill, particularly in the East Tampa district, where you're up uh, bringing that <clears throat> those properties up in value, and you're also trying to provide affo more affordable housing. The land costs are less here than they are anywhere else. Uh, the construction costs remain the same, but at least you have a product in an area which, where you can have a positive impact on the neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> development shall not exceed the density as this one is, is at or below the density that's allowed. Each land use category shall have a unique set of zoning districts permitted for the land use category and adopted, which may exist for the use of this land. And, this is a permitted use. Ensure that the adequate amount of land planned and residential purposes to accommodate the projected population increase. Again, um, this is an ideal location for infill housing. 
and it's in an area that doesn't have a lot of infill development going on. Encourage single family detached and multifamily to and designated to include orientation to the front doors. Um, one of the units faces Columbus Drive, the other two face the side and the connectivity between the sidewalks and the sidewalk that's required in the front will be made. <clears throat> Increase the diversity, improve the sustainability of multifamily in the area. Um, this has already been, I would guess that those, those duplexes on the corner are, look like they're 1960s era uh, duplexes, so it's, it's already been uh, a, re a redevelopment area, and this this apartment building, which is at the other corner, is probably from the 30s or 40s, uh, and it's typical for for that part of the town. These are across the street. Um, those are relatively new, and those are those are triplexes. So we have a pattern of development that is encouraging multifamily in the area. And I said, we'll make the corrections uh, in the event the council approves this, we'll make the corrections regarding the site plan between first and second reading. I think, again, this is an ideal area for redevelopment. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. We'd like to, to uh, have this, the documents of, and the comments made by staff to be received and filed and made part of the record. Uh, I thank you for your time. and. That uh, concludes my presentation. Yes, ma'am. I have a question for staff. I didn't know if that was for me. Okay. Can you yes. please put up a picture of the site plan? Of course. Can you see it? No, it's, uh, you need to zoom out, please. And then it needs to be up for everyone else to see too, please. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so while I understand the applicant says that he can put sidewalks in, we already have um, waivers for side. Mm -hmm. And the drive aisle is 20 feet, which is already a reduction in the drive aisle. That's correct. How can we shoehorn a sidewalk in there? I shall, I'll have to have uh, Jonathan Scott from Transportation come up and speak on this one okay yeah Jonathan Scott transportation you're talking about the sidewalk along the roadway there no no he, they need to have sidewalk connectivity yeah, from the building to Columbus Drive yeah. there, there's no there, space to yeah. add a sidewalk so he says he's going to make those changes between first and second reading but I am asking staff mm -hmm if that's even possible. Well, he, he can have like a pedestrian connection like from the sidewalk from Columbus down. And then he'd have to, it would have to, I can point to the. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, please, yeah. please show. Because on all these others, they've shown how the, there's an extra sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case, um, to do that, he, he could show a pedestrian connection, you know, for this unit to, right here, but you know, these over here, it's gonna basically have to uh, connect to the entrances. So it would like overlap the uh, drive aisle. Now he can do like some markings to uh, make it safer to but, designate that walkway. Okay, you know. <laughs> but but you could not really add a sidewalk. Not really, but it's, a, it's more of like a walkway pedestrian connection. Okay. So we, what we do a lot of times is have them mark it, you know. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Michelini, um, can you explain what you meant when you said that the um, developer is taking a leap building into this um, community? Um, it's is just this his first time there? It's just because it's just starting to redevelop, and some of the houses that are in there already were probably built the last time that it saw any new development was probably in the 60s or somewhere along in there. So it would, it would be a welcome addition to come in and start redeveloping some of these sites. Um, the picture I showed you of the duplexes on the, on the corner and the quadplexes, those, those are, um, 
Those are sim similar to the ones that were around by the University of South Florida, the one that was first built in the 60s, designed for student housing. And I'm sure that that's what, this wasn't built for student housing, but it was built for worker housing that was less expensive. Um, and it really hasn't seen a lot of attention from new development. So that, that was my point was that I don't think that these, these units here, <clears throat> these are at the corner and the property that we're talking about is immediately adjacent to it going to the, to the east. My guess is that in the future these will be coming down and, and more uh, newer developments will be going in there. But these are, these are basically uh, blue collar working houses. These are not high end upscale houses. And I'm sure that it's just whatever people can afford to live in. So it's, um, as this gentrifies and comes, comes back on the market and, and redevelops, it'll provide other, other opportunities for housing that currently don't exist. And being adjacent to the interstate, you know, the, it, it's a difficult sell. If it were more interior to, you know, further away from the interstate, it might be a little bit easier to develop, but these are these are difficult lots to to redevelop. Councilman Carlson, could you show us the? Um, as I remember, one of the waivers is that the moving the doors. Um, could you just show us the, um, the the elevations again so we can see what the front looks like and then what what the where the doors are? Do you have the elevations? doorways and which could you just show us which one is the is the front that from the road what um, where the where the door is supposed to be um, is it the top left no this one is the this one is the front one okay. the front on uh, Columbus Drive okay thank these you these are the interior two thank other you. interior ones any other questions all right anybody in the public wish to speak on this item item number six anybody in the public Anybody online? Nope, we don't have anybody online. We have a motion closed from Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilwoman Kurtak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council member Clendenin. Yeah, I, um, this is another one of those projects we're trying to put uh, the old adage of, you know, a, a 12 shoe uh, uh, foot into a size eight shoe. You know, it's not that the project itself is, you know, that the buildings are what they are, but it's too much for this piece of property. When you're talking about the setbacks, we do so much for this piece of property. I mean, and the alleys reduced. I mean, all the waivers that are requested is, you know, why they found it non-compliant. It's just, you know, and, and the orientation of this building is totally not in scale with the rest of the, con as you, you, you showed, there are there's this new development going on with these duplexes, but they're all forward facing, facing Columbus with the doors, you know, where it should be, and none of this alley access, aisle access stuff that you've got going on. Um, you know, I, it's just it's 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 too much, and this is definitely, you know, this is definitely a residential area, or at least it's, it appears to be mostly residential. Um, and as as you said, you know, working working folk people and. I, I think on this, this property you could fully well develop with Euclidean zoning without these crazy waivers, without a PD, come back with a great project that, you, that, for the, for the four, that fits on this piece of property and this piece of land that the developer can make money on. And, you know, we, I think this council would be glad to approve it, <coughs> bring back good projects on appropriate <coughs> size, appropriate size re, uh, unit on appropriate size lot. And we're all in. We want to build and house people too. But... This is too much for the for these size pieces of property. It's just too much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm just, Mr. McLeany. This one doesn't work for me. I think that um, well, it doesn't matter what my opinion is about it. Um, I'll just go ahead on and move to deny <coughs> REZ 23-57 for the property located at 29. 
17 East Columbus Drive due to the failure of the applicant to meet the burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence that the development as conditioned and shown on the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city code and the applicant's failure to meet its burden of proof with respect to the wa requested waivers. And some of the reasons um, for you to comply with applicable goals, comprehensive plan, such as while the zoning, do I have to read all of that? Okay, while the, while the proposed rezoning may be allowed for consideration under community mixed use 35 des designation, the proposed site plan does not engage the public realm or provide a safe pedestrian connection from the three single family attached units to the sidewalk along East Columbus Drive in violation of land use policies 4.3.2 and 4.3.6. We have a motion. Quick question. I'm sorry. Do you have anything with regard to any other I, site? Yes. I'm sorry. I was going to add amendment. Sure. I'll second it. And then yeah. can I have some friendly amendments? Sure, of course. Um, I say that also fails to comply with land development code section 27 136. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the proposed development as shown on the site plan does not promote development that is appropriate in location or character by failing to comply with the East Tampa Overlay District design standards and proposing a reduction in drive aisle width. Not only is the width being reduced, but the drive aisle is the only means of ingress, egress for pedestrians. Um, additionally, there are five waivers um, that just uh, the, the, the side and rear yard setbacks, the waiver for parking, the front door parking, um, the reduced buffer, but for me, it's the reduction in the drive aisle from 24 feet to 20 feet um, that's also being used as the sidewalk is my most um, uh, pressing issue. And Councilwoman, would you please cite to the section of the code regarding I'm sorry, waivers 27-139, uh, subset 4. Thank you. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. I accept these amendments. Yeah, the developer, yeah, his, his leap is just too big. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. The era. And I'm going to explain my vote really fast, if I may. I'm going to vote no on this um, um, uh, motion. Here's why. Um, I, I agree there are a number of waivers that, that go out a little far. This is an area, though, there's a larger issue um, that uh, uh, th this would help tremendously. And I'm uh, just, my, my rationale, I think it's going to pass, but I'll vote no. Thank you. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Um, I agree with Vera, no. Hurtak? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Maniscalco? No, and I agree with uh, what Councilman Vieira said. I think it's a good development, um, you know, it in the area. I know exactly where it's at. I'm glad that, that you have a developer that's looking at building new housing. And so um, I, I will vote uh, no to the motion. Okay. Motion to deny carried with Vieira, Carlson, Maniscalco voting no. Thank you, Council. Item number seven. Zane Hussein Development Coordination, case REZ 23-62. This is a request to rezone the property at 3204 West Cypress Street. Proposed rezoning from RS 50 to CG. Pass along to the Planning Commission. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is located within the Central Tampa Planning District in the Oakford Park neighborhood. The site is located within co the Coastal Planning Area and Evacuation Zone E. The subject site is located here, outlined in purple. Mm -hmm. And the subject site is a mix of uses with commercial uses along West Cypress Street. And it transitions to residential uses to the south and east of the subject site. This is the future land use map of the subject site, which is again here. It's outlined in represented by the community mixed use 35 designation, which is present along West Cypress Street. 
to the east and immediately adjacent to the south is the residential 20 designation. And as you move further south and further north away from West Cypher Street, it transitions to the residential 10 future land use designation. The commercial general zoning can be considered in the community mixed use 35 designation and would be appropriate for this site provided that any potential non-residential development is sensitive to the existing residential uses abutting the subject site. The comprehensive plan promotes pedestrian safety and encourages commercial development that enhances the city of Tampa's character and ambiance. In doing so, the comprehensive plan requires new commercial development to connect building entrances to public rights of way and provide sidewalks and area where it is practical and feasible for pedestrian oriented activities. The subject site is within a mixed use corridor and a transit emphasis corridor and the comprehensive plan has specific direction that promotes a pedestrian oriented mixed use development with access to transit, buildings oriented to the street with parking in the rear that is screened from adjacent residential uses. Providing street trees are also encouraged along <coughs> these corridors, which is supported by the mixed use corridor policies within the comprehensive plan. The proposed rezoning would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding uses and is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the community mixed use 35 designation. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, any questions? Yes, sir. <coughs> Zain Hussein, Development Coordination. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. I always go the wrong way. As you see the property right here outlined in red, there's along West Cypress Street to the north, to the uh, east you have uh, North Matanzas, Avenue. If you go to the south, you have West Lemon Street running east to west. And if you go north, you have West Gray Street and also West Cypress Street uh, directly north. To the property uh, to the west and also to the north is pro professional office use. To the south, uh, I'm sorry, those two are zone PD. Uh, to the south and to the east are zone RS50, and they're occupied by residential single family. The current lot is occupied by a clubhouse. The lot square footage or lot acreage is 0.33 acres uh, and the maximum building height uh, is 45 <coughs> feet in height. As you see where the property is located at southwest intersection of West Cyprus and North Matanzas. As I went out to the site and took pictures, I will show you what I saw. First picture is of the site itself, as you see the clubhouse. That is from West Cypress Street. Another picture of the site itself, that is from North Matanza Street. To the northwest of the site, you'll have residential as well as business professional office running east to west on West Cyprus. To the north, you'll have uh, the PD zoned uh, prof business, prof business professional office on West Cyprus. And to the southeast, you'll have those residential single family uses. The development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the land development code. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? All right, the applicant is online, Mr. Bricklemeyer. If you could turn on your camera, raise your right hand and we'll swear you in. And unmute yourself, please. Okay. Unmute. Okay, wonderful. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're back to receive is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Joseph Brickelmeyer, uh, 26736, Highway 27, Leesburg, Florida, 
34787 I, uh, I wanted to point out one thing to the council, and then I'll make a couple comments. And the final uh, on page uh, 20 of the staff report, in conclusion, the request is within the character of the surrounding area and consistent with long range development pattern encouraged under the community mixed use 35 future land use category. That said, I was contacted by um, two folks from after our mailing and public outreach, uh, John DiOrio of the uh, Oakford Park <laughs> neighborhood and uh, Dominique Good both contacted me. Uh, Mr. DiOrio and I discussed the fact that we still have to go through a change of use. That uh, building has been a clubhouse since 19, at least 1995, as far as I can figure out back. Um, so we're gonna go through, have to go through the change of use process as well, which will require site plan we are in development uh, and my client plans are currently in on um, and has plus that are not solidified until we get through that site planning review. I looked at that a couple times along with uh, um, say from, uh, different people from the planning staff to uh, give us input on that as we've been building out toward this process. With that, I'm subject to questions from the council. Thank you very much. Any questions at this time? No, no questions. Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number seven? I see no one and there's no one else registered. Uh, we have a motion to close from Councilman Aye. Miranda, second from Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Council Member Clendenin, you're up. I move file number REZ2362, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3204 West Cypress Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS50, residential single family to CG commercial general, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. Roll call. Vote. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Maniscalco? Yes. We we have a physical, I'm sorry. Motion carried with Vieira being absent at vote. Second adoption, second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard Tampa, Florida. Yes, ma'am. Item number eight. Thank you, Council LaShawn Dodd Development Coordination. And item number eight is REZ 2364 is for the property located at 5232 South McDill Avenue. The applicant is represented by um, Mark Bentley and um, the request is to rezone the property from CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development and it is for the use of a restaurant. So I have Emily come up and give her a report. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is located within the South Tampa Planning District and the Ballast Point neighborhood, and it's located within the coastal planning area, specifically evacuation zone B. This is an aerial of the subject site, which is located here, and it's at the intersection of South McDill and um, what South Puritan comes down this way. We don't uh, have this on our screen. If we can have it pulled up, please. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, this is the subject site right here. South McDill comes down here, and this is South Puritan Avenue, which comes this way. Um, it The area is a mixture of uses with some residential as well, multifamily, as well as commercial uses along South McDill Avenue. Um, and there are some also located to the north and west of the subject site. This is the subject site here represented by the community mixed use 35 designation. As you can see from the map along South McDill is the, South, the CMU 35 designation and as you move away from South McDill both to the west and the east is the residential 10 uh, future land use designation. Land use policy 6.1.9 promotes a development pattern that encourages walking and transit through building design and pedestrian amenities. The comprehensive plan also promotes pedestrian safety and encourages commercial development that enhances the city and Tampa's character. 
The plan development proposes to retain the sidewalks adjacent to the site along South McDill Avenue and South Puritan Avenue. It also proposes a pedestrian connection to connect the building's entrance to the sidewalk on South McDill. Two additional entryways with a sidewalk are proposed along the south facing wall of the structure providing safe pedestrian access from the parking area. And finally, the patio is proposed adjacent to the sidewalk along South McDill Avenue, which engages and improves the public realm. Planning Commission staff has reviewed the application and found no adverse impacts to the surrounding neighborhood. The request will not alter the character of the surrounding area and is comparable and compatible with this portion of the Ballast Point neighborhood. The proposed plan development is consistent with the development pattern encouraged under the Community Makes Choose 35 designation. And this concludes my presentation. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you again, Council LaShawn, Doc Development Coordination. And this um, PD request is, um, as mentioned earlier, for the use of a restaurant. So a restaurant use was already established at this location. Um, the site contains 12,684 square feet. The setbacks proposed are to the north, four feet, to the south, 46 feet, to the west, 29 feet, and to the east, four feet. So the existing structure, which is on site, which I'll show you um, pictures of shortly, that will remain. The applicant is proposing to add an additional 510 square feet of outdoor area to the west. Um, and then I'll show you the zoning atlas in the immediate area. Um, you have um, along McDill um, commercial uses, but there's also to the north an approval that's through a special use for residential use um, that's just to the north. And then you've got residential single family that's further east and then commercial south and west. So I'll um, show those to you momentarily on the zoning map. So this is the site plan which was submitted. This is um, South McDill Avenue that's bordering, um, and this is um, Puritan Avenue. So the site proposes you can have an egress and egress on um, Puritan, and then egress only is um, on South McDill. This is the structure which is existing, and this is the outdoor patio area that's proposed at this site. So you can see the surface parking that's located on site, along with um, the walkway connections to the outdoor area and to the um, structure for the indoor seating, and then a connection to the sidewalk, which is located along um, both avenues surrounding the site. So this is an elevation um, of the structure. So this is the north elevation. And then this is the east elevation. This shows you the south, the last two of the south elevation, and then this is the west elevation. And then the zoning atlas, this is the zoning map of the site. So this is the site um, which is located in red. And this is South McDill Avenue. Um, this is um, Puritan Avenue. And so you can see that the, um, this is the residential, which is immediately north that was approved under a special use. You've got um, a PD that's located further north um, and to the west with residential uses. And then you have your CG zoning that's located here all on McDill. And then as you head further east, you have your residential single family zone with RS60 to the east. And then um, to the southeast is RS50. And then here are pictures of the site. So this is the south end of the site. This is on Puritan. And you can see the structure that's there. This is the west end of the site on McDill. This is west of the site. This is another view west of the site, the residential. So this is the view if you're on McDill and you're looking north. The site is um, to the right on this picture, to my right. This is north of the site. That is the residential use that's located there opposed to the special use. This is east of the site. So this is on Puritan, the single family residential. And then this is south of the site, the commercial that exists there. Development review staff reviewed the um, request and finds the request inconsistent. It is due to the waiver um, and the inconsistent is from transportation and that's for the parking waiver requested. Um, also within the staff report, I did not include the revision sheet. So I have the revision sheet here to submit into the record. Thank you. 
Um, and that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm available. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So they want to go from 26 to 13 parking spaces. Am I correct about that? Yes. So there are 26 spaces um, required and 13 are being provided. This is inclusive of the occupancy with the in and outdoor area. So how many do they have right now? So right now on site, I believe there will be 13 spaces because I don't think they're adding any more. Yeah, it's yeah. permitted currently for 13. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi. So here we're back to these PDs, which I've decided in just a few months I've been here, seems to be the cracker, the fentanyl of city council for <laughs> zoning. Um, it's, it's just crazy. Um, so what is it on the site plan that I'm missing? <laughs> what is it that I'm missing? Like, what, why, why are they here? I mean, I'm sorry, they're asking for the waiver for the parking. What do they need that couldn't be accomplished with Euclidean zoning that they were, they're asking us for a PD? So keep in mind on the site, if you have a Euclidean zoning, you cannot request the um, waivers. So your waivers are going to be one thing that's going to trip you for the. Um, but I mean, they would just have to go through a different process PD. to get the waivers, right? They, I mean, they could. Depending on the waiver, right? Requested. So in this case, they have the waiver to reduce the required parking. They have a re waiver request to reduce the use to use buffer. On the east, they're going to four feet with a six foot PVC fence. So, quite, so how is that? Because it's an existing building, right? So are they, is it an existing encroachment they're just trying to make legal? Is that what we've got going on here? Correct, it's an okay. existing building and now that they're coming in to add the addition, then you have that, that um, condition. Is that an addition or is that, because the addition is just the patio, correct? Just the patio, that building But, but then that corner where we're going to Four feet. That's that's just an existing encroachment that we're yes. just trying to we're trying and that's to. That's part, and that was taken into consideration when staff did its finding. Okay, so we're just we're just kind of retroactively fixing a, a previous sin. I mean, they're reusing the building that's there. Right. Okay. So so we're we're talking just the the parking waiver, and what was the others? The parking waiver, the um, used to use buffer waiver on the east, and then on the north there is a um, buffer waiver to um, two feet with a six foot um, PVC fence. Okay. And this is also existing. This building, this is the structure, and then that's the outdoor patio area. I mean, I know but it's- But is that the same setback as the structure that exists? I mean, is, is the applicant intend to lease parking somewhere else so they don't, inc they don't burden the neighborhood? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. I, never mind. I'm, it's getting late. Hello, I'm tired too. Beyonce wore me out. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening, City Council. Ryan Manassi with Johnson Pope, uh, 401 East Jackson Street, Suite 3100. Mm -hmm. I'm here tonight representing the property owner and our client. Um, I'll try to not be as not be redundant with information that was provided by staff and answer any additional questions that you may have. Um, the gist of this whole project, as kind of alluded to by LaShawn, is the existing structure was historically a restaurant. The site configuration was permitted in that co configuration, which I'll show you here in another slide. The catalyst behind this planned uh, development is the addition of this patio area, which is actually not included as FAR or floor area ratio either. Um, a point I'd like to make is it is CG. It does get under the CMU one, uh, 35 category. It allows up to a 1.0 for standard development. We're using a 0.16. So we're well below the intensity. And this development is um, marketed to be a neighborhood restaurant. It's not, it's not going to be, obviously you don't see a drive through or um, a lot of square footage for the restaurant itself. I mean, it's generally a little over 1,900 square feet of indoor area and 500 square feet of outdoor area. This room probably holds, what, 70-some people. So you're looking at a very small neighborhood-serving restaurant. Um, just to briefly hit on the waivers, and maybe that'll help with some of the clarity, too. Um, so waiver number one is the reduction in parking, as Councilwoman Henderson uh, pointed out, and that is a reduction from 26 to 13. So the way that's calculated is they have to, we have to provide a, si a site plan and then floor plan, which gives us the restaurant occupancy and then provide that to staff. They multiply that by their tables and we get the overall required parking. So the existing restaurant, and it's permitted, is it should be at the 66 
occupants on the inside. The outdoor portion roughly accounts for 36 seats. And really that's where the culmination of this waiver comes from is the addition of that 510 or 20 square feet triggered our parking requirement to go up from what was permitted. The second waiver, which refers to the use to use buffers, that's strictly uh, to bring into conformance the nonconformities of the building. Um, again, this is an existing building. We're not asking to expand any nonconformity to the north or the south. Um, again, the patio is orientated towards South McDill, as you know, is obviously the more <coughs> commercial corridor, um, more traffic and everything like that. So we're keeping all impacts to this patio, obviously, to the front. And also what that does is maintains the existing green space VUA that's been previously had there and permitted and such. Um, the third waiver is the reduction of the eight foot landscape uh, buffer that's required or VUA buffer that's required around the parking area. What I'd like to point out with that waiver specifically is that we have to take the shortest distance. So for instance, you're seeing on the waiver, we have to go from eight foot to three foot, two inches on uh, McDill and then uh, eight foot to four, four feet, five inches on Puritan. So those are the shortest points. But as you can see, the site, one, the shape is obviously uh, very interesting to work with. It's like a diamond shape, and this is a platted lot. So this is not a remnant of some type of development that's been chopped up or anything like that. Um, but the VUA buffer varies. So we may only be giving the 3.2 or 3 foot 2 inches here. However, you can see it's very substantial here. So again, the waiver has to account for the shortest distance, and that's why we're requesting that waiver. <clears throat> The elevations, um, I know LaShawn showed you this. Uh, one thing to point out was on that um, east elevation, you could see there's no windows, no patios, or no, no further impact to the neighborhood that is immediately to the east. This is just from the property appraisers, and I just wanted to point out that the building was built originally in 1959. So our client um, originally started remodeling this building, and it's in permitting, and I'll show you the permit number here in a second. Um, but again, the reason for the PD is because as soon as we added a additional occupancy and not even floor area ratio, which counts for, you know, mostly enclosed buildings, when we added an outdoor patio, it triggered full site compliance. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we're here for that. Um, ultimately there are different processes the city has for requesting variances and such, but two things to point out when you have this kind of unique site with an existing building that we're trying to adapt to the current code and then try to make a small uh, improvement to the property. It's almost easy, uh, not just easier, but more clear to everybody on a plan development why we're requesting it this way. Additionally, what the plan development does is it restricts the use. And that's something I like to point out. So we're not, we're taking it out of CG and we're only saying you're a restaurant. That's it. So if down the line anybody wants to do anything else, they're going to have to come back in and rezone. And a restaurant is historically what I believe this neighborhood is used to. These are just some uh, Google photos I grabbed and I try to go back a little bit in time, but 2007, you can see it's like a pavement from street edge to sidewalk everywhere, right? I think this was an old, uh, I couldn't read the sign, but it was some type of cafe. But you'll see it's, it's an evolution over time. 2011, it looked like it was some type of German restaurant, but you can see this massive asphalted area. When you start seeing the difference over time is when error ring, uh, came there and that was 2013-2014 timeframe and this was a permitted plan um, for that site configuration that's similar to what you're seeing here tonight. Um, see this X here actually it doesn't show up red too well but I'll point to it. <laughs> it indicates the outdoor garden area that was originally intended for this restaurant uh, back in 2013 but you'll notice a similar configuration of the site and I say similar because erring was there like this in this capacity and you could see this um, outdoor what they called a garden area but that would be the area that we're proposing for this uh, 510 square foot expansion for an outdoor patio with no structures and then again in 2021 so this would be probably the last picture you'd see of the uh, air ring before it was completely remodeled to what some of the pictures LaShawn showed um, again I'm pointing this out for a reason but you could see how it's like asphalt to asphalt from basically property line, a little bit of the VUA area, and you can see it over here as well. I thought this was a good visual for you to see. I outlined the, generally the property boundary in yellow, but again, you could see this is post the air ring permit in 2013, 2014, 
where they had this outdoor garden area and then the configuration that's very similar to what we're proposing tonight. And the reason, again, I say similar is because in 2022, our client went through and is getting approved for permitting. And that's why you see in those pictures the new construction of the building without this being occupiable area as far as outdoor patio. So the site, what it did was it was, it was actually permitted um, with that large asphalted area to remain in its current configuration. So through this rezoning, what it does, it actually provides our ingress and egress points to city standards. It provides proper fl uh, flares along Puritan, and then it actually reduces that large open area that might cause traffic issues. And that's at the recommendation of obviously the review from transportation staff and meeting the technical requirements and that such. Um, we have to, pro um, we are providing sidewalks. They're, they're existing, but um, we may have to move this one up. Um, also pedestrian connections there. And again, highlighted in yellow is, is basically the catalyst for this rezoning tonight. So what we're doing here is we're trying to take, again, an existing structure with nonconformities um, that's existed as a restaurant and add a very small patio to allow the patrons the capacity to go outdoor. And I know Planning Commission and Zoning staff already discussed it, but just as there's a snippets from the, the Pima map, uh, the Comprehensive Plan category, CMU 35, you could see it running along South McDill, obviously inclusive of our property, and then you get into the R10, the residential neighborhoods, as well as the zoning map. Um, it is pointed out that the property in the north is zoned CG, and LaShawn did point out it is a special use one that was recently, relatively recently done for this, um, I think it was a duplex, if I recall correctly. So, but, but for all intents and purposes, the zoning district along McDill has been CG. Um, these two PDs are those large multifamily developments. This is just to give you an idea, if you haven't been down Puritan, looking towards South McDill, you have commercial here, you'd have the existing restaurant here. There's that large multifamily. You have a gas station and further commercial going down south. Looking north, gas station, multifamily. This would be the existing restaurant and being remodeled. And then that patio area would be out here and then going further north on uh, South McDill. Looking south on South McDill. Again, I try to keep some of the picture in there so for um, um, directional purposes, but you can see it's all commercial going down. These are just some um, some renderings the architect provided to us through this. Um, our client, he plans to open a, a small Italian restaurant. Um, this is what it hopefully will look like if approved with the outdoor patio area. And again, they can operate and they're in through building permitting for the enclosed building portion right now. I had no selection on the cars, just in case anybody was wondering. I was wondering that the portion to the I leave, I leave that to the architect. <laughs> uh, this is just some renderings from the inside. So as you can see, this is not a large structure. Again, 1,900 some square feet of structure. Um, it's not a lot of uh, restaurant. This, this kind of reminds me of uh, a restaurant almost like a, the Somi over on, um, what is that? Uh, yeah, Howard. Uh, Howard is a small, almost neighborhood you know, restaurant. It's not intended for a large uh, crowd and such. Um, as pointed out by staff, transportation is inconsistent, and that's due to transportation, um, us requesting the waiver. But as you can see, the remaining review agency departments have found us consistent with applicable, applicable codes um, from the land development regulations. Uh, most notably, the waivers from natural resources are still found consistent, and LaShawn pointed that out is because, again, it's an existing structure, and we're just trying to accommodate um, some of those nonconformities from that structure. And then obviously the Planning Commission stated that they were consistent. And with that, I will, I know Stephanie took my thunder away, but um, I did uh, originally, before we even applied for this application, we sent out um, a proposed site plan as well as floor plan to the neighborhood associations that were found on the city's website. Uh, we did not receive any opposition. I followed up with Stephanie again tonight, and she was nice enough to provide me a letter that I'll turn in to uh, the clerk for the record uh, in support of this rezoning as well as I'll turn in the backup document for my presentation. Uh, with that being said, unless you have anything. All right, um, I'm available for any questions. He answered everything already. Councilman Moran, <laughs> Councilman Carlson. I tried, I'm sorry, sir. Um, I, I did talk to the, the property owner. I don't think he intends to have it, but if there's concerns about it, I mean, we can, we can address those. Um, just for full disclosure, there is an alcohol petition coming to you in two weeks. Um, it'll be for a restaurant use, 
uh, beer, wine, and liquor. Not trying to get off topic here, but um, I'd be happy to address that on that as well if that that seems easier. I know historically it seems like we usually go in that, but. That's a sucker. You don't need any parking. Correct. <laughs> 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 Ryan's gonna open up his next uh, restaurant and take a stab at it. You know? Do you know something about the? We are providing a bike rack too. Obviously, it's required by code, but we do intend for this to be a very pedestrian-friendly <laughs> environment. Obviously, I showed you on the site plan. I think staff indicated there's pedestrian connections, there's sidewalks, there's bike racks. Again, this is supposed to be for the neighborhood. And um, I think Ms. Pointer's email or letter, handwritten letter, states that you know they like that this uh, or they're in support of this development. So, Councilman Carlson. So when I used to go to Cafe Pepe, I had to park way down the street. We knew you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Just kidding. Oh, um, the, the the sound issue is the same one I have. Um, if 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 we pass this, and then there's loud music outside, and, and the lawyers can cut me off. If I'm not supposed to talk about it, but um, if it if it if suddenly it's loud outside, um, we're going to get all kinds of complaints. So what um, do we have to wait till the alcohol license, or is there something that, that we can do now? Kate, uh, Kate I, I I think I was going to suggest waiting till the alcohol issue comes up. Yeah, if I may, Kate Wells, legal department. Um, those types of issues as they relate to how this business will be operated would be better addressed through the request for alcoholic beverage okay. permit. Typically right. on a rezoning, we do not try to address the operations of the establishment. So the, the sa same question to both of you. Um, it's, he's classifying as a restaurant. Um, what, what assurance do we have that it won't convert to a bar? Um, is there is there some regular uh, um, uh, check-ins to make sure that they're hitting? I think the ratio? that would be addressed when they make the request for an alcoholic beverage approval. Right now, there's no license at all. Are we? Are we yeah, right now, this is just the restaurant that they're requesting through the rezoning. Anything if, related to the type of establishment that will be operated there. That would be regulated through but the request for a B permit. Part of his design on the inside looked like a bar. So, uh, I mean, it, it, there's, but there, you're shaking your hand, Ryan, saying there's no. Um, I could just, I mean, I could tell you, uh, it's like Kate alluded to, on the AB2 I can, uh, that you're going to see in two weeks, which does restrict how alcohol is sold, we are requesting a restaurant, which is a reporting restaurant. We're and not then, requesting a small venue or anything like that. And so. The last thing, and I, I think this one is allowed, hopefully, um, it, the you said it's it's permitted right now for 13 spaces. So the the restaurant's been operating for more than 10 years with 13 spaces. Is that Cor correct? Well, when Air Ring shut down and the new owner bought the property and they're going through a remodel right now, they're in permitting right now for the enclosed property. But what again, mm -hmm. can you say? How many spaces Air Ring had? <clears throat> I think they had 14, um, and this was permitted with 13. And is did you happen to look to see if there are any complaints about? parking in the streets or anything? Uh, I haven't received any complaints. Again, like I stated, I reached out to the neighborhood associations before we even submitted to try to just facilitate conversation. Um, and is there any, do you have any kind any. of evidence or study that you could cite that, that says that neighborhood restaurants need less parking than, than destination restaurants or something like that? Uh, I do not, um, but I can say, again, it's on McDill Avenue and there's sidewalks, so it's pedestrian friendly, friendly. We're providing the access to the restaurant from McDill. There's bus stops. Um, we, we are providing bike racks, and obviously, I'm, I'm sure everybody hears this all the time, but there's Uber, Lyft, and, and generally, I mean, if you live in that neighborhood, I imagine you'd probably just walk there. Again, tip, like some of the other smaller restaurants you may see in the city. Thank you. Mm -hmm. anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this item this is item number eight i see no one we have nobody online can i get a motion to close oh, oh. we have a motion to close from council member go ahead can i submit this to the record yeah council member clendenin second from council member miranda all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed councilman hertak okay file number rez 23-64 um 
Ordinance rezoning the property in the general vicinity of 5232 South McDill Avenue in the City of Florida and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development Restaurant providing an effective date <coughs> and including the revision sheet. We have a second from Councilmember Carlson. Roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Just to explain my vote because I've come out so strongly against PDs. This is an existing structure they're modifying that has had the same uh, use as restaurant for years. And uh, it, 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 this is one of those things that kind of makes sense to resolve or pass in and, and, and to do what needs to be done to get this property uh, going in conformance and a service to the neighborhood. And I'm going to vote yes. Okay. Henderson? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote no. I, the parking is a big concern to me. If it's a successful restaurant, I think that would turn into a problem for the community. Um, you know, good food is good food, and people can come from everywhere. And I just don't see where the um, patrons would end up parking because it actually does hold 80 people capacity. Uh, and it, I just, that's, I'm just going to vote no for that reason. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Thinking about it, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to vote no because of the parking. I mean, if any restaurant's got any business, you got to have at least 50% of the occupancy. If you got 50 inside, you need 25 spaces. People come in and out, but with 13 parking spaces, I wish them luck. That's why I, I don't want them to, to have to have business. I want to have a lot of business and a lot of parking. Men's Apple? Yes. Motion carried with Henderson, Miranda voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at the Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Thank you, City Council. Thank you Have very much. Thank you, they throw them a light preserver. Sorry about Lee's Grocery, the second best pizza place in town. Wow, I'm gonna need a workshop on that. Item number nine. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Council LaShawn Dock, Development Coordination. Item number nine is REZ 2365. This is for Folio 102910.0000. The applicant is represented by Steve Michelini. Um, the request is to rezone the property from RS50, residential single family, to PD, plan development for um, residential single family detached um, use on site. So I turn it over to Emily to do her report. Thank you. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site's located within the University Planning District and is located within the Coastal Planning Area, specifically Evacuation Zone D. The subject site's located here. Um, and there are single family detached uses to the north, south, and west of the site. And commercial uses are located to the east of the subject site. Where is this, north of Hillsboro? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, it is north of okay. Hillsboro. The sites here located, uh, represented by the Residential 10 Future Land Use Designation, which is to the north, south, and west of the subject site, and along Comanche on the east side and further south is the CC35 Future Land Use Designation. Planning Commission staff reviewed the application and found minimal impacts on the surrounding neighborhood. The subject site is within the Residential 10 Future Land Use Designation, which encourages single-family residential development of up to 10 dwelling units per acre. This portion of North Church Street between West Powhatan Avenue and West Comanche Avenue um, has an existing density of 3.09 units per acre based on 20 sample sites. And this portion of North Church Avenue has been developed at approximately 30% of the density anticipated in this area. 
The subject site and North Church Avenue can currently be considered underutilized and an increase in the number of dwelling units is consistent with the policy direction of the comprehensive plan that seeks to ensure an adequate supply of housing for Tampa's growing population, especially on vacant or underutilized sites. The proposed PD is comfortable and compatible with the development <coughs> pattern and is consistent with the long range development encouraged under the residential 10 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Seeing none, yes ma'am. Thank you, Council LaShawn Dock, Development Coordination. And this um, PD request um, is consistent of a property that contains 6,538 square feet. Um, the applicant proposes to construct um, a single family residential detached structure on site. It would contain two stories with a maximum building height of 35 feet. The setbacks proposed are to the north 7 feet, to the south 6 feet, to the west 20 feet, and to the east 25 feet. This property has um, frontage of 46 feet and um, it has a depth of approximately 142 feet. Um, so this is the site which is located on um, church. This is the site plan which was submitted. So you can see the, um, the width identified here at 46 feet. And then the structure is proposed um, with two car enclosed garage and then a connection to the um, sidewalk along Church Avenue. And then here are the elevations proposed for the site. So the top two photos are the east and the south elevation. And then this is the north elevation and the west elevation. And Emily talked a little bit about the area, so I'll just show you the um, aerial map. I don't have my pen. So this is the site, which is located. Um, I have highlighted it here. It's not this red parcel. It's the one just north of it, this smaller piece. And this is Church Avenue. And just to orient you on the map, this is Hill, Hillsborough Avenue, and this is Del Mabry. So a lot of the parcels on the east um, side of Church Avenue, they're commercial or industrial because they actually front Del Mabry, some of those uses. And then the same when you um, head south to the south, these parcels front Hillsborough, so they're commercial in nature. So this is a little bit different. We haven't seen this in a while. These lots are unplatted, so they're not a part of a subdivision, and that's why there's not an inset of a um, plat map like we usually will show you, the um, block and um, lot number. And so what I did was just run the numbers on the um, lot width in the area. Um, it's just important to note that one, this is a different area just because of what I mentioned, the commercial that's on Del Mabry to the east and then the commercial that exists to the south on Hillsboro. But also this is the um, county line. So there were additional parcels which would have been included in the analysis, but they're in the county. But you can see the lot widths are smaller um, also as you um, our approach north of the county line. So I just want to read um, quickly the analysis, the results of the analysis, but I think you can see a, the majority of the lots are larger because just because of the shape of these lots um, and the area itself. But in relation to reviewing the existing development pattern, the subject block, and this is from um, Powhatan to Comanche, um, it contains four lots, and this does not include the subject parcel. All of those lots are um, developed at a width of 65 feet or greater. And then in the area, three lots or 6% of the lots are developed with a width of 55 feet to 59.99 feet. And then two or 4% of the lots are developed with a width of 60 to 64.99 feet. Two or 4% of the lots are developed at a width of 65 feet to 69.99 feet and one or two percent of the lots are developed with a width of 70 feet to 74.99 feet, and one lot or two percent um, of the lots are developed at a width of 75 to 79.99 feet. Seven or 14 percent of the lots are developed with a width of 80 to 99.99 feet, and 29 or 59 percent of the lots are developed at a width of 100 feet or more. And this is the subject site. This is the view that's on church. 
This is if you're um, looking south on church. So the site is located here. This is some of the commercial that's located here that abuts Del Mabry. So this is south of the site. This is one of the commercial. This is east of the site, directly across the street. <coughs> this is another view further east of the site. This is north of the site, residential. And then this is north of the site. This is um, on Powhatan. So the development review staff has reviewed the request and finds the request inconsistent based upon the analysis. Um, but that concludes staff's report. I'm available if you have any questions. Yes, Councilman Pendenham and Councilwoman Henderson. The other two parcels that, well, I, well, I guess there's, there's a total of four that face church on the west side. The, um, are, they <coughs> are they currently developed? I, I, I'm, I might have missed it because it's being late. The ones that are like so, so on your flat. Yes. So okay. the yeah. ones that are, so this one in the yellow. Yeah. This is 65 to 69. But is, is, is there something there? Is it already developed? Yes. Is it a single family resident? And the, and the one north of that is single family as well? Single family residence, yes. Okay, and what's what's in that big piece of property to the south? The, the to one the that's south on, is yeah. a residence. Okay. That's a residence. Okay, thank you. It's just oriented differently. It's a pretty large lot. lot. Thanks, Doc. I, I answered my own question. Thank you. Just thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, applicant? Um, good evening, Council. This is a unique situation regarding this lot. Um, it, it doesn't have the frontage, but it has the depth. It's 142 feet deep. And the, and the proposal is for a single-family residential house that meets all of the single-family residential setbacks. So uh, I, except for one side. One side is being reduced to six feet, but that's that's pushing the house back so that we don't interfere with a grand tree that's at the corner of the lot. Um, my, general, my general interpretation of this is that if you drove by and you saw a single family house that met the setbacks except for where the tree is, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't notice any distinguishable difference between that and any other single family house. And as LaShawn pointed out, if you go further north, there are lots that are much, much smaller. Um, I have a copy, uh, just in case the question came up regarding, uh, did somebody split this off of some other parcel to create this? And, uh, and the research that I conducted showed that neither that lot nor that lot created this, this lot. It has a folio number, uh, it's unplatted, but it's a lot of record. And originally, the owner tried to get a permit to build a single family house and was basically told, you don't meet the frontage, you meet the square footage, but you don't meet the frontage. So if you're at 6,500 square feet instead of 5,000, which is required under RS-50, you've exceeded that requirement by 1,500 square feet and you're meeting the setbacks. Uh, LaShawn pointed it out, seven, seven feet on one side, six feet on the other, 20 on the uh, front and rear. But the six feet is to save, it, it's to accommodate this, this tree. So you see the radius, the radius of that tree. Can you see that okay? Yes. Yes. So to create a protective radius for the tree, it slid the house down to six feet. Um, the front doors will face Church Street. The driveways will, for, you know, will obviously face the street. So there's not an issue about that. It will meet all of the green space requirements and the open space and all of that. Um, there are smaller lots in the, in the area. I, I'll show you the tax deed. It indicates that it... Um, that it, it, it wasn't split off, it was, it was purchased as a single lot. 
So they didn't create this hardship. Um, and the only way that we can address the hardship, you, there's no designation that's like a RS-45. So we have to ask for a PD in order to address that issue. There are single family houses in the area all around them on this side. As you move further uh, away from that, if you move south, you'll, you'll sit, have the commercial properties that, that uh, are down near Hillsboro. And if you go further west, you have Del Mabry. Uh, I think just in general, um, you're going to see more of these smaller lots come in for infill. And I don't generally think there's a problem as long as they're meeting the setbacks. Um, <coughs> these, these, basically these remainders are, are around there. I don't, I don't really know how it got created, but it, it's there. It has a folio number. Um, we don't have an address yet because he didn't want to go to the extent of filing for an address if, if you deemed that it was not appropriate to develop. The Planning Commission has found that it's uh, consistent and compatible. Uh, the staff has already pointed out it's 142 feet deep by 46 feet wide, which is 6,535, 38 square feet. Um, there is commercial and industrial all around there. It does seem like it's uh, appropriate for single family residential. Um, we're not asking for waivers on that. so. I'm uh, not asking for our waivers except for the ones that we pointed out, which are basically the, the, uh, the setbacks on one side. Um, it is economically feasible to build a house there. It will be a, a smaller one that probably, again, is less expensive than, than some of the other homes. It's in an area that needs housing. And uh, we haven't received any objections from anyone. We've noticed... Uh, and visited the site. It does have a park in the area, which is Al Lopez. It's also close to uh, St. Lawrence School. It does meet the policies and objectives and the Planning Commission found it to be consistent uh, to regulate the letter, little levels of building intensity and providing housing. Land uses that are more efficient use of property, and, and again, I'm, I think you're going to see that in the future you're going to, there's going to be more of these little infill lots. And again, if they meet the setbacks and you're driving by them, you would not notice that, that it was a smaller lot necessarily. <clears throat> the guidelines are in the Planning Commission's report. I mean, I'm, I don't want to go through all of them. It's getting, it's getting kind of late, but... Objective 9.2, 9.2.1, 9.3, 9.3.8. Uh, land use objective in single family areas, which is what we're proposing, a single family residential structure. 9.5, 9.51, 9.53. Neighborhood and community plans, which is, you know, it's a stable, it's not going to disrupt anything in the neighborhood. It's a single family house. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's approved, uh, it, it, you know, is planned to be a compatible use, and the, and the Planning Commission has found it to be so. Um, we're below the density. It's residential 10, and with the square footage that was provided in that lot and the area that's in need of redevelopment, it, uh, I think it qualifies on those accounts to, for Council's consideration to be favorably approved. There are a number of policies, land use policy 8, Point one four point two. Um, land use policy two point one two nine point two one. Housing policy one point three four. Land use policy nine three point eight nine five point one nine five point three. All support this uh, being considered, and um, as I said, we're respectfully requesting your approval. Um, I, I think that it does meet the intent of the code, and it and it does not disrupt. Or cause any harm to any adjacent property. Any uh, questions for the petitioner? Yes, ma'am. I think, uh, well, not necessarily for Mr. Michelini, because ninety-six percent of the um, lots in this area is fifty percent or greater. So that kind of you know bothers me. But it is one house. <laughs> yeah. In this instance, um, I want to ask really more so staff the question, if it is because. 
Do we have any regulations or rules about the width of a home um, on lots um, that may not have be the standard 50, like this one is 50 feet or, uh, I mean, the other ones are 50% or greater, 96% of them. So in this instance, is there a width restriction? Do, can it, does it have to be a smaller house in order for it to be on this lot, since it's a narrow lot? Yes, LaShawn Dock Development Coordination. Yeah. So we have building codes that require um, building separation, but yeah. um, aside from that, you'd have your setbacks. So there's yeah. no minimum, and, and okay. this is a PD, so he doesn't have set, okay. you know, he doesn't have setbacks established through the PD. He can establish setbacks through this PD. Okay. If I could elaborate a little bit, because it's a smaller lot, and we're agreeing to meet basically the RS-50 standard oh, right. setbacks, it will, by definition, be a, a much smaller home. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, Mayor yes. Nicole. Yes, sir. I just want to ask staff. Um, he uh, testified that it has a, a folio number and that it appears to be originally platted that way. Is there any, um, uh, is there any evidence from the city <laughs> side that that... Well, th this is so, from the property appraiser's office. It shows the folio number on that. Yeah. So this is currently unplatted. <coughs> it has not been platted. But does it, does a folio number mean that when this was originally, this neighborhood was originally set up, that, that there was a lot that, that, that was that size? Or? No, I can't believe so. Likely on the folio number, when the last extensions um, have a number to it, then it may have been created later at some point. And I think what Steve is representing is that it does not. So it, it, I can't find any evidence that it was split off from either of the adjacent properties. And I know, you know, from previous conversations here in front of council, you all have been concerned that perhaps this, this property owner split it off and decided to sell it, or this property has decided to split it off of his and sell it. I can't find any evidence of that. I, I, do, I do have a track record here with a tax deed that shows that for some reason they discovered that taxes weren't being paid on that particular parcel. And then it was sold uh, to one individual, not not to two individuals, and, and then recon, reconveyed. And, and then there, there are neighborhoods like Dobieville or parts of Ebor that had these shotgun houses, so it could have... Um, that's why I asked. Yeah, I think the critical element here is meeting the, the setbacks on the side and the front so that the appearance when you're driving by is the same as any other larger lot. Thank you. Second. Move close. And no, for we, the record, yes. For the record, there are no waivers requested yeah. um, because I know that was mentioned earlier, and um, mm -hmm. also there are no site plan revisions needed. Thank Any you. public comment? Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item? Item number nine. Seeing none, nobody online. May I get a motion to close? So moved. Motion to close from Second. Councilman Miranda. Second from Councilman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Council Member Carlson, is it you? Um, yeah, I'll move um, file, file number REZ 2360. Uh, file number REZ 2365. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of Folio number 102910-0000 in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification, RS-50 residential single family to PD plan development residential single family detached providing effective date. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Carlson, second from Council Member Henderson. Roll call vote. Her tech. Um, I just want to explain my vote. I think this is a I did have my mic and then yeah, turned off. Sorry, it turned. It's, it wants to go to bed too. Um, this is a weird lot, and I asked this, all these same questions if it had been split. And it's 47 feet. It's not something we would approve at that at any point in the history of the city. So these little lots, I agree with you, will be coming up. And to do the best we can with them, housing in a neighborhood is best use. So I will say yes. And I feel like I have to explain too because it's a PD and everybody knows my position on PDs as previously described. But I think that, uh, that your client did a great job of accommodating 
uh, the best use of this property with a very modest sized building on a, on a, a nice sized lot. The lot itself is big, um, saving the Grand Tree, giving it plenty of room uh, with, a, with a slight setback reduction from normal Euclidean kind of um, zoning, I think was above and beyond. And uh, again, I think it's, uh, it, this, we're gonna have these, you're right, there's, there's areas in town that have, have these types of lots that we're gonna have to deal with. Um, so I'm going to vote yes. Uh, uh, even though it's a PD, I'm going to vote yes. Okay. Henderson? Yes, I'm going to vote yes as well. I like the fact that there's just one house on this lot from your clients, Mr. McCurdy. Viera? Yes, but that's because. Miranda? Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at the Old City Hall building located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida. Thank you, Council. Thanks. All right, two more left. Let's, let's drag them out. Do it. <laughs> we can go to two as if we No, try. no, we're not. <laughs> Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number 10, case REZ 23-77. Uh, this is a request to rezone the location of 3917 North Nebraska Avenue. Proposed rezoning from PD to CG. I'll now pass along to the Planning Commission. Uh, the subject sites look, oh, sorry, Emily Phelan, Planning Commission stop. <laughs> the subject sites located within the Central Tampa Planning District, the East Tampa Urban Village, and the Ybor Heights neighborhood. This is the subject site located here at the intersection of East Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and North Nebraska Avenue. The surrounding area has mostly commercial uses along Nebraska and Martin Luther King. Um, to which would be the north, south, and west, but to the east, there are single family uses as well. The subject site is again here, is it has two future land uses on the site. The pink is the CMU 35, and the red is the community commercial 35 designation. They are the primary designations along both Martin Luther King and <coughs> Nebraska Avenue. The comprehensive plan promotes pedestrian safety and encourages commercial development that enhances the city of Tampa's character and ambiance. In doing so, land use policy 15.2.6 requires new commercial development to connect building entrances to public rights of way and to provide sidewalks in areas where it is practical and feasible for pedestrian oriented activities. The subject site is also within a mixed-use corridor at the intersection of two transit emphasis corridors and within the East Tampa Urban Village as defined by the comprehensive plan. Any future development should be consistent with the policy direction for the city overall as well as these specific areas. Due to the location of the site at the corner of two arterial roadways, the proposed CG zoning district would be appropriate for the site provided that any potential non-residential development is a is sensitive to the existing residents above the, the subject site. The proposed rezoning is comparable and compatible and consistent with the CMU 35 and the CC 35 future land use designations. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Nope. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property or the lot. As you see the property right here outlined in red, currently zoned PD. Uh, to the north you have a uh, lot zone SHCG, that's a commercial store, warehouse, and a church there. Uh, to the south you have a PD and that is a bank, as I'll show you in pictures to come. Uh, to the west you have a gas station and supermarket, uh, that's zone CG and PD, which I'll show you in pictures to come. And to the east you have residential single family zoned uh, RS50 and CG. The lot 
is 1.94 acres. The maximum building height is 45 feet in height. The existing use is a vacant structure on the site. And when I show you the picture, you can guess where it is, what it is. Um, the subject site is located at the southeast intersection of North Nebraska and East Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. I will show you the picture of when I went out there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Yes, I wish you would. Pharmacy back in the day. And the rear of the structure. The drive through in the back. To the south, you have the bank I spoke of. To the west. You have a supermarket, and I'm sure by those colors you can guess which one it is. I like how you don't say the names of these places. <laughs> Win Dixie. We, we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> well, so it's, t it's 10 10 09, all right? And uh, here I'm at the intersection of East Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and North Nebraska, and across the street is a BP gas station. Yes, sir. Development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the land development code. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Council. Alex Shaler, 400 North Ashley Drive. As Truett mentioned earlier, we don't we get the very rare opportunity to bring Euclidean rezonings before you. So when we do, we always get really excited, and I can promise you this will be a bit quicker than Truett's. Um, I will skip over the location information since Zane already oriented us on where the site is located. I want to jump into the zoning history. Um, this site is currently zoned PD, but prior to 2000, it was split zone CG and RS50. In 2000, this PD was born with the development of the Walgreens, and then our proposal before you tonight is CG, and I note this just to tell you that there is precedent for a Euclidean zone CG on this site. Um, this is the prior site plan, um, as you can see, showing the Walgreens building. So while our client intends to keep this as a commercial development, we want the flexibility to provide a different range of uses in the commercial zoning district and don't necessarily want to be locked into a specific pharmacy use as this PD um, prescribes. So staff fully supports this application, as Zane mentioned previously, and I wanted to note that our client did meet with the Ebor Heights Neighborhood Association. Um, they offered to help in any way that they can. They're eager to see this um, being redeveloped, and they are planning on organizing their quarterly neighborhood residents meet and greet in our parking lot um, to get some more eyes on the property to help come up with a future vision for um, some commercial here. So with that, I will close, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I like how that site plan <laughs> said Buffalo Avenue at the time. You, you weren't even born, probably. Probably not. Martin Luther King used to be Buffalo Avenue. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Yeah, just a comment. I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. We were really sad when Walgreens decided to leave the community, um, but hopefully um, it'll be something bigger, better, and greater that definitely benefits um, the community. So looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item, item number 10? No? Anybody online? Nope. Motion closed. Motion closed from Councilman yeah. Miranda, second Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Miranda? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, file number 10, Orange Beam, 27. Orange Beam presented for first reading consideration an ordinance rezoning property, general vicinity of 3917. North Nebraska Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from District Zoning District Classification PD Plan Development 
to CG Commercial General providing an effective date. Uh, let me find this thing here. Is your Caridian, so everything is fine. Thank you very much. We have a motion from Councilmember Miranda, second from Councilmember Hertak. Roll call vote. Anderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at the Old City Hall building located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida. Okay, go ahead, sir. Zane Hussein Development Coordination Case REZ 23-79, agenda item number 11. There's a request to rezone at the property located at 3119 West San Pedro Street. Proposed rezoning from RM16 to RM18. I'll now pass along to Emily with the Planning Commission. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site's located within the South Tampa Planning District in the Palmacia neighborhood. The subject site is located here and the area surrounding the subject site is, prim is primarily uh, residential in nature. There are single family detached, two family and multifamily residential uses. Uh, two blocks uh, south of North Bay, North Bay to Bay Boulevard uh, corridor, which contains light commercial and non-residential uses. The subject site is here represented by the residential 20 future land use designation. It is the primary uh, future land use designation in the area with pockets of residential 10. Uh, Planning Commission staff reviewed the application and found no adverse impacts on the surrounding neighborhood and the request will allow for compatible infill development and an area plan for 18 dwelling units per acre. <laughs> um, with a, uh, an area plan for 20 dwelling units per acre consistent with land use policies 2.1.2 and 8.14.1. Planning Commission staff reviewed lot widths along this segment of West San Pedro Avenue. Lot widths varied from approximately 35 to 90 feet. The lot width of the subject site is 150 feet per the submitted survey. Taking into consideration the existing block density and range of lot widths among this segment of West San Pedro Avenue, Planning Commission staff finds that the request will provide for residential development that will be built within the existing street, block, and lot configuration of the neighborhood. The proposed rezoning supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate supply of housing is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. The proposed RM18 zoning would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding uses and is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the residential 20 future land use designation. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Nope. Mr. Hussein? Hussein Hussein Development Coordination. I'll go ahead and show the aerial view of the property first. Goals. I always go the wrong way. All right, as you see the property right here outlined in red, uh, to the north is zone RM16 and RS50, that's residential single family. To the south, RS50, residential single family. To the west, you'll have residential multifamily. And to the east, you'll have vacant land. And also, you'll have uh, the interstate running north and south uh, to the east. The lot area is 15,000 square feet. The building height is at maximum of 35 feet in height. Uh, the existing use is a residential single family. The subject property is located at northeast intersection of South Esperanza Avenue and West San Pedro Street. I will show you what I saw when I went on site.
as you see the current single family home on the site. Also another view of the site. To the west. Also down to the west, you have residential single family and residential multifamily. And directly south, you have residential single family. Development Review and Compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the request to be consistent with the Land Development Code. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? No. Mr. Michelini? Um, Brevity, yeah. Steve, Steve Michelini. Um, I've been sworn. This is a Euclidean zoning. It's RM16 to RM18. Um, there aren't, we cannot ask for waivers under those Euclidean designations. There's multifamily all around. The staff has already indicated, and I would just have their reports be um, included as reference as being consistent and compatible. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Very good. Move Anybody in the, in the public? No? Move, motion closed? So moved. From Aye. Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Vieira? This is the last, the last one. I threw up my agenda of accident. Um, <laughs> ain't that something? <laughs> hell, 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 at least I'm honest. Um, uh, an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance rezoning proper in general vicinity of 3119 West San Pedro Street, City of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification RM16 Residential Multifamily to RM Residential Multifamily providing an effective date. Do we have a second? Second. We have a Thank second you. from Councilwoman Henderson. Roll call vote. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Menisconco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 7, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, mm -hmm. Tampa, Florida. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council, and thank you for allowing me to spend the evening with you. <laughs> it's been a let's, pleasure. Let's not do this again real again. soon. <laughs> oh, whoa, just wait. Just wait. All right, folks, before we get our new business, uh, just a, a personal request. Uh, if you look at the August 31st um, date, we have a City Council workshop session, and we also have a City Council evening session, which is they're both going to be very busy. So the workshop has a lot of items and I'm not asking you to do anything this evening but I'm asking council members to look at what's going to be on the council workshop and if there's anything that you see that could be continued that is not absolutely pressing just for the for the sake of time because we are going to be here day and night and I know that that evening is going to be very very busy on top of the day and you saw how today went so not asking you to do anything today but between now and next Thursday which is a regular council uh, meeting if you would take into consideration anything that is not absolutely pressing that we could perhaps continue that's my request does it help it does it help if I say please <laughs> yes ma'am you don't have to do anything tonight um in that I would maybe maybe we should do workshops on different days and just throw it out there See, that could work, you know, because night meeting and workshop, you know, we and are exhausted and we have to stay focused. And so. the CRA, like, we, we may just have to do something because yeah. we can't keep doing this. And that's something and that we can discuss. And it's only 1030. So, I mean, like, realistically. Yeah, but today was, was a, a very Yeah, but if we had started at 5, it would only be in 1030. I mean, it would be late, but it wouldn't be. Yeah. Like, today, now it's horrific. So I agree well, with you. I will look. I will, yeah. I will change to... I'll look at trying to change some Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it next Thursday so we have any ideas or any yeah, considerations. I agree. Councilman Carlson, do you have any new business? Yeah, just quickly, I, I've had a request from a lot of people in the community to ask the administration for a, just a chart that shows what the tax proposals are for other cities. So I, I'd like to make a motion to ask staff to create just a chart of the 
the tax proposal for uh, surrounding cities and counties and our peer cities in the state now, but to, to be to be uh, given to us as a written report sometime before September 5th. Sometime before September what? 5th. 5th? I'll okay. second that. And, and may I have a friendly amendment to that, if I may, if, if you'd like to have this is. I'd also like to see, um, and, and not to uh, add to your motion, though, I guess I am, um, uh, what the history of uh, millage increases is percentage-wise over the last 50 years, um, just so that we know that as well. Um, I, no, for Tampa, not for, no, Since not just, yeah, yeah. this would be the third proposal. Yeah. And I mean in terms of the, the just, just the, and you know what, Councilman, forget it, disregard, it's late. No, I can get that on my own, don't worry. But I'm what, and what I'm asking for, Google's for, what I'm asking for specifically is, is just to look at whether they're proposing raising it, reducing it, or, or keeping the millage the same. Are you looking at the cities or counting around this, right? And, and also peer cities in yes. Florida. Yes. Yeah, from my knowledge, I know Plant City staying the same. St. Peter's proposing a millage decrease, but they have Penny for Pinellas. So there's there's other things. But there's variables. A lot of variables. CIT. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a, do we have a second? Second from Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything Aye. else, sir? No. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Heard that, okay. Councilwoman? Um, yes, sir. Yes, I have a laundry <laughs> list. One of them is mine. I'd like to make a motion for staff to research Orlando's prohibition of aisle-style de aisle style developments and draft a proposed ordinance to be presented to City second. Council on December 14th. 2023, 2023. Uh, Council Member Vieira with the second. All in favor? Uh, isn't that a CRA day? Uh, it's a land use that evening. Yeah, but we would need to do that during a regular session. A regular session. Oh. How about the December 21st or December okay. 7th? Yeah. Uh, December 7th. Okay. That'll be for December 7th. Is that second still good? Yes. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything else? Yeah, I've got administrative uh, motions to be made. So I uh, I move, I request, uh, to request the, of the Planning Commission, I make the motion to set a transmittal hearing for TACPA 2317 and TACPA 2318 on November 30th, 2023 at 501 p.m. and direct the legal department to provide the city clerk with the form of notice for advertising the public hearings. We have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes, sir. I make a motion to set an adoption hearing for TACPA 2319 on November 20, 30th, 2023 at 5.01 p.m. and direct the legal department to provide the city clerk with the form of notice for advertising the public hearings. We have a motion from Council Member second. Clendenin, second from Council Member Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes, sir. I make a motion to set an adoption hearing for TACPA 2317 and TACPA 2318 on February 22nd, 2024 at 501 p.m. and direct the legal department to provide the city clerk with the form of notice for advertising the public hearing. Motion from Council Member Vieira, uh, sorry, Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 And last, I make a motion for the Planning Commission to appear and present before City Council with an update on the future land use assessment Second. for the comprehensive, com comprehensive plan during the City Council workshop on September 28th. Motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Can I? And she, the clerk already has that, I believe. Can I just make one, one suggestion? You talked a lot about PDs today. Can you? Right, we were can, supposed to, we're having a, Can I you I talk I to staff and make a motion some other time about it, please? Well, supposedly it's, it's coming up on a workshop. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's the yeah. September workshop. Yeah, we're, we're, because I, I made that motion like a month ago or so more. We've been here a long time. Long time. I know, exactly. Anything yeah, else? It feels that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so I'm done. Chair, I have nothing. That's wonderful. Councilman Vieira is going to um, fill that in. I, I'm going to do it a uh, couple real fast. Um, a lot of you all know District Chief Ken Huff with Tampa Fire Rescue. Um, tonight at 6.30 a.m. he's going to be ending his career with Tampa Fire Rescue and I wanted to give him a commendation. I may do it later at City Council or not, but just there you go. We have a motion for Council Member Vieira, second Council Member Randall in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, then really quick, if I may, on September 7th I have the Uptown presentation. I want to take that off the agenda and, and I'll bring it back another time, but there's a conflict, so uh, remove that from the agenda, which helps us all. All right, second from Council September, September 7th. 7th. Motion for Councilman Vieira, second for Councilman Marin. All in favor? Aye. Um, then third, if I may, uh, we, we have funded a uh, job training and apprenticeship program for returning citizens, which I believe with, between the city and the county, I've been working on this with uh, Gwen, uh, Commissioner Gwen Myers, is going to be about half a million dollars uh, for returning citizens right. training. And I want that to come before City Council for a presentation so that we can learn about this program on November 2nd. 
Councilmember Vieira with the motion. Second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then lastly, um, the Veterans Treatment Court. Many of you all know them. Uh, Colonel uh, DJ Reyes, Colonel Jim Fletcher, and Colonel Keith Poyner, Stephanie's husband. Uh, he's a senior mentor there. Uh, they're celebrating 10 years of the Veterans Treatment Court in the 13th Judicial Circuit, and I wanted them to come to Tampa City Council. I found two days that could be uh, particular, uh, October 19th or September 28th, um, uh, which they're October 19th it is. I'll, I'll, I'll take that Councilman one. Vieira, second for Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that's it. Thank you. Councilman Miranda? I got one. Receiving five. Second yeah. from yeah. Councilman yeah. Henderson, all in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I was gonna. Oh, I'll bring it up later. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not pressing. So uh, we are adjourned. Good meeting, kind. Of.